from the Diplomatic Academy of London and a Master of Business Administration from the European University in Geneva, Switzerland. In 2002, he was appointed the World Health Organization as the WHO Global Coordinator of Vision 2020 and fostered the international collaborations of key stakeholders in order to shape the global public eye health agenda. And now he is the CEO of International Council of Ophthalmology. Over to you, uh, uh, Ivo. Ivo. You have to unmute. I was still in mute. Yes, I need to practice. Thank you very much. I am delighted to be here. It's, of course, a historic moment. We are starting a very new program, global program, to support personal development, growth, particularly in the area of uh, managing and leading in eye care. So I'm very happy to be here and to have our full support of the International Council of Ophthalmology. Thank you. So again, I will share the screen. So I'm happy to uh, thanks to the International Council of Ophthalmology. Uh, we have the President Interim, International Council of Ophthalmology, Dr. Neer Gupta. She, she is also the Chief of Glaucoma Service, Professor of Ophthalmology and Vision Sciences. She's the President-Elect of World Glaucoma Association, and she's Professor and Dorothy Pitts Chair, Chief of Glaucoma, University of Toronto, Departments of Ophthalmology and Vision Sciences, Laboratory Medicine and Pathobiology, Faculty of Medicine, Professor Dalalana School of Public Health, University of Toronto, Director, Roy Foss and Family Glaucoma Laboratory, Kinan Research Center for Biomedical Science, Lee Ka Shing Knowledge Institute, Founding Director, Glaucoma Unit and Clinical Research Program, Founding CEO, Human Eye Biobank for Research, St. Michael's Hospital. And uh, over to you, uh, Nero. Neeru, you have to unmute. Thank you very much. Um, I am absolutely delighted to be with you. Welcome to everyone for the thousands that are logging in from around the world. Thank you for being with us today as the ICO launches the World Ophthalmology Leaders Program, uh, Leadership Beyond Borders in Ophthalmology that takes place this weekend, today and tomorrow in collaboration with the All India Ophthalmological Society. My special thanks to Professor Natarajan, immediate past president of the AIOS and the ICO board member. And all, of course, special thanks to our guest speakers, our panelists for all of their efforts and their participation for an outstanding event. It's really a historic milestone for our global activities to support uh, ophthalmologists everywhere to gain skills and leadership in ophthalmology and eye care. And we're so excited to be able to launch this program with you today. And of course, uh, we have Ivo Kotsur, our CEO with us. And, and, I, and uh, I think you know how much we support and hope that this event will be inspiring for all those logged in. Before we start, I think it's important to remind you that the ICO has its roots back in 1857 when it held its first World Congress. And we work with international societies from around the world. We have 182 members and our goal and mission is to improve education and access to the highest uh, quality of eye care. We're very pleased to partner with our largest member, the All India Ophthalmological Society, to launch this program today. And we have, a, you know, we the ICO cares a lot about ICO, um, about leadership uh, among our societies, and is not new uh, to us. We've had over the decades. And um, building on this legacy, we're really excited to be uh, 
doing this for colleagues around the world. Um, especially the COVID-19 pandemic has been uh, life-changing. It's uh, significantly influenced our professional lives, but our private lives as well. And we, uh, the, uh, ICO has supported our community through global resources that are provided through our uh, I societies. And, uh, you know, all of us face risk as we care for patients. And of course, um, uh, we all pay tribute and we salute those who continue to put themselves at risk to help our patients uh, preserve their sight. It was only about six weeks ago that uh, the ICO held its first uh, vert all virtual world ophthalmology Congress meeting. And it, just a, a quick reminder, please, that for those who you are not aware, the all of the Congress content is still available until the end of September, September the 30th. So for those who've already registered, you can come back anytime. Uh, for sessions that you may have missed and for those who have not registered uh, for students and for all those in training. So please join us. Um, without further ado, I want to thank you all for being with us. We're going to have a great uh, two days. I know that I hope that all of us will be inspired by a very holistic approach uh, to lead, we'll uh, turn it over to you. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you, Professor Neil Gupta. We have the All India Ophthalmic Society. We have Dr. Namrata here, and we have the faculty from all over the world, American Academy of Ophthalmology, and uh, the various others who will be joining in. So thank you, Neil, and thank you, you all. So we start the program with the divinity, and I'm very happy to have, have here Didi Krishna Kumari from Sadhu Vaswani Mission. And uh, I wanted to say that uh, Didi is a very spiritual soul, blessed by the Lord. And she was the closest to Dadaji. And when he, when he's there and physically was there and now uh, 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 like uh, spiritually he's always with us. And she's dedicated her life from the age of two. She's in the mission and the Dadaji has to, to uh, taken her in his own hands and I have interacted with uh, Krishna Didi from more than two decades where myself and Dr. Chan Seger will be mentioning about the lessons learned from him. And we have none other than uh, Didi Krishna Kumari to give us the blessing and give note address and start this leadership program and how we can live happily. And that's what uh, Dadaji was mentioning. And and uh, we, we, we and namaste to Didi namaste. for uh, accepting to give us the talk and she's going to lead the life. A warm welcome to every one of you. Today is the Independence Day. Let us begin by just closing our eyes and let us breathe out vibrations of healing, of well-being, of health, of harmony, of peace to all the residents of India, to all the residents of the entire world, and to all, all, to the entire universe, to the entire creation. May all be free from disease and be filled with peace. Thank you. Sir, in fact, it is an honor and a privilege for me to be associated with this beautiful program. It's a joy to greet the young ophthalmologists all over the globe. And I feel specially grateful to Dr. Natarajan for giving me this privilege. Thank you, sir. I must confess that I am not a leader, but I had the rare and the unique privilege of spending my life at the lotus feet of a true leader who was truly incomparable and unique. 
without any conscious effort at leadership, hundreds and thousands willingly followed him. In him, there was a blend of courage and compassion. Complex problems would seem so simple in front of him. In him, foresight was accompanied by practicality. And above all, he guided us with the example of his life. I'm talking of none other than my mentor and my revered Gurudev, revered Dada Chevi Vaswani. And before I begin, I bow down to him, a true leader, an inspirer, and an energizer. Dear friends, the Sadhu Vaswani mission is today recognized as a humanitarian organization with activities spread through spiritual unfolding, service of the poor, education, medical, and you will be happy to know that the mission also runs a state of art KKI Institute, which is also reckoned as one of the leading institutes. We also have activities that extend to relief and rehabilitation. And we have had this opportunity in the mission. We have the slogan that we are, we are all working together to change Corona into Karuna. Karuna, as you all know, is compassion. Because today there is so much of poverty. There is so much of need. It is our duty to go out of our way to bring joy into the lives of the joyless ones. We also have animal welfare for our founders, revered Sadhu Vaswani. He believed that creation is one family and birds and animals are our younger brothers and sisters. One day, a delegation of young leaders came and visited Rivia Dada J.P. Vaswani and they asked him, how should a leader lead? And Dada, he smiled. And what did he say to them? He said, remember this one thing, whether you're leading a group or whether you're leading a big organization, just remember that when everything seems to go wrong, say, I have done it. When everything seems to go okay, you say, we will work together. And when everything seems to go fine, say, you all together have done a wonderful job. He often said to us that remember that you must think through the heart. Think through the heart and feel through the head. I repeat, think through the heart and feel through the head. When we think through the head, we are led by competition and one-upmanship. But when we think through the heart, we achieve cooperation, we achieve progress. When we think through the heart, our focus is on solutions. But when we think through the head, our focus is on problems. Our head is directed towards selfishness, but our heart thinks of the benefit of all. Our head is assailed by so many thoughts and therefore many a times we are distracted, but the heart is always one pointed and focused. Therefore, he would always urge us, think through the heart, and feel through the head. And he said to us, remember, light up your minds because it is your attitude that counts. Your attitude determines your altitude. There is a funny little story of a grumpy old grandfather and one day he decides to visit and spend some time with his grandchildren. He goes to visit them. And as he's having his afternoon nap, one of the grandsons, he says, just let me have a little fun. So what does he do? He picks up some blue cheese 
and as many of you know blue cheese is known for its strong smell he picks up that blue cheese he grates it and he goes and smears it on the beard of the grandfather and suddenly the grandfather he wakes up from his sleep with a snort and he just rushes out of the room saying it stinks the room stinks but as he's going from one room to another he sees the entire house is stinking the entire house is stinking and then he moves out and what does he say the world is stinking and what did beloved dada say to us he said therefore be careful of your thoughts if we entertain if we have continuously negative thoughts in our mind then we will get the foul smell of our own negativity wherever we go but if we have wonderful thoughts positive thoughts then we will spread the scent of the thoughts that are in our mind wherever we go not only will we be energized but our vibrations will energize the entire team every experience that comes to us every one whom we will encounter will have the scent of the thoughts that we hold in our fragrance and choose your thoughts beloved dada said to us thoughts are the building blocks of life we rarely pay attention to our thoughts we say after all it was just a thought it doesn't matter no my friends thoughts are the building blocks of life in fact it is through our thoughts thoughts are the ink with which we are writing the destiny of our lives therefore always ensure that our thoughts are positive they are always always uplifting the second principle on which i would like to draw your attention as i said we are in a very small skiff success or leadership is like a huge ocean and we are in a skiff in a boat of just 20 minutes so how far can we go whatever practical suggestions or principles i can pass on to you i will make a humble attempt to do so the second one is always try to appreciate appreciation should not be silent it should be expressive everyone each and every member of the team every one of us is endowed is blessed with some gift with some skill or the other and a good leader he identifies those skills some may have a very strong business acumen some may be very good at creativity some may have a caring and a compassionate heart there are so many skills there are so many gifts which god has bestowed on each and as we will identify those skills those you the harmony to create the symphony of success beloved dada was asked can you tell us the secret of success and he said once i was invited to attend a huge concert and i was amazed to find that the orchestra it comprised of 100 members and the music conductor with just a flick of his uh, stick which he had in his hand the uh, flick of his baton he elicited a wonderful wonderful music the symphony was so energizing but dada said what did i see all the 100 participants had some or the other role to play someone was a lead singer someone was just on the guitar someone was someone was on the casio someone was just clapping her hands someone was just tapping her foot but it is only when the talent of each every person was no role is insignificant no role is trivial we must just appreciate 
everybody and that will help us to bring out the best in everybody let me move faster the third principle beloved dada said is do your duty do your duty honestly sincerely faithfully conscientiously a true leader will never shirk from his duty but he will go one step further he will do his duty and a little more beloved dada often reminded us that today the world has become so selfish so self centered all of us we just think about i me mind that has become our vocabulary what will i gain from this how will i benefit from this some of us just to stay ahead in the rat race we are even prepared to compromise on our values here it is that we need the light of the heart and determines whether the heart is rich or not it is not how much you possess but how much you give that determines the richness of your heart no man can be called rich just by turning to his ledger that person is rich who's kind who's compassionate who's understanding who's patient beloved dada gave us a wonderful definition of understanding he said what is understanding it is built up of two words understand when is understanding possible when we are able to stand under unfortunately many of us we do not want to stand under all of us want to be in the forefront if we want that true spirit of understanding we need to cultivate humility and therefore today servant leadership is one of the most important factors which is recognized in a true leader a true leader yes he will do his duty but he will go beyond the call of his duty to help to bring joy to share to bear to care i'm reminded of a beautiful story of a night clerk he was an ordinary night clerk his name was george but every duty that was given to him was performed in the best possible manner he was an ordinary night clerk as i mentioned to you one night an old couple enters the hotel and it is pouring heavily there is lightning there is thunder and the hotel is completely full and this night clerk he tells the couple that the hotel is full but he sees that this couple at this time of the night are little apprehensive they are a little stressed where will they be able to go now in the night so he understands their position and this night clerk he tells them if you will give me a minute i can just see how i can help you he could have easily said the hotel is full how could you have asked for a room without prior booking but he said just give me a few minutes maybe a minute or two let me see how i can help you and what does he do he calls the housekeeping and he tells them go and set up my room make it the best that you can and then he comes to the old couple he says i'm willing to offer you my room i know it is not the best room in the hotel which you can afford but i'm sure you will be comfortable in a few minutes the room will be ready and when the room is ready he himself leads them to the room he gets for them a cup of coffee sees to it that they are comfortable and then goes back to his call of duty this was one of the many ordinary things for him because this was a part of his nature to be kind to be considerate to be compassionate a few months pass by and the world famous waldorf astoria hotel is inaugurated and who is appointed as the head of this hotel none other than this night clerk because that couple was mr and mrs astoria and they could not forget the kindness that this night clerk 
had offered them his spirit of caring, his spirit of sharing, his spirit of forgoing his happiness and making them comfortable, making them happy. And the fourth principle is stay connected, stay connected. We all are very good at that, especially. And this is what that has kept all our spirits alive, this connection, especially during this pandemic. It is this connection that has kept all of us strong and vibrant and buoyant. Stay connected. Yes, we all, before we move out of our homes, we ensure that our mo mobile phones are fully charged. Our laptops are fully charged. Yes, that is very necessary for many of us. We need a power pack with us because just that strength of the mobile is not sufficient. But beloved Dada urged us, stay connected with the source, the source of all wisdom, the source of all strength, the source of all healing. Stay connected, stay connected, stay connected. Today, life has become so volatile. Fortunes are lost in a minute as they are gained also in a minute. This pandemic has created so much uncertainty and it has literally imprisoned us in our homes. Fear, tension, stress, worry, anxiety, loneliness, boredom has led to depression and it has started claiming so many lives. We need the secure, we need security, we need strength, we need protection. And that can come only when we are connected to the source and the source of true strength, true wisdom, true healing in God. Imagine we have a power station within us, but we live in a state of permanent power failure. Beloved Dada urged us that every morning, just spend half an hour. He called it PQT, personal quiet time, which is very, very, very necessary to connect with our inner self, our true self. For within each one of us are untold energies of the spirit, untold reservoirs of the eternal. And if only we tap those energies there is nothing that we cannot achieve. There is nothing that is impossible. Therefore, let us connect with the source by spending some time in silence every morning before we start our day. And usually during the day also, whenever we are traveling, whenever we are moving from one place to another, whenever we get a chance, we try to char charge our mobiles. Maybe it's five minutes, maybe it's 10 minutes. We say, let the battery be full. Maybe we need it for a rainy day. Maybe we need it for something that may crop up. Similarly, he said, during the day, whenever you get an opportunity, just take out one minute before you're entering a meeting, you're waiting for the elevator to come, you're waiting for someone to answer the phone call, just utilize that moment and connect yourself to that source. And you will be amazed by the results you see in the meeting that you're just going to start. My friends, healing too is a gift from God. You doctors, many of you must have experienced that. Sometimes the surgery goes so smoothly, but it heals so fast. And sometimes it takes so long to heal. The healing power of God is required. I recall once when beloved Dada went to see a dentist. On his wall was a sign which said, the dentist treats. It's God who heals. And Dada smiled and said to him, what you have written is very true. The dentist treats, it's God who heals. But Dada said, go a step further. You should see the dentist entreats, it's God who heals because all healing, all strength, all power flows from God who is the limitless one. Let us cultivate faith in him and contact him as often as we can. And never forget that a sense of humor is very, very, very important. One day in one of his light moods, Dada said to us, leadership is like a bird in the hand. If you hold it tightly, you may kill it. And if you hold it loosely, you may lose it. 
So that sense of humor is very, very important to keep the entire team together, to keep the entire the atmosphere light. And many times a little sense of humor can save grave situations, stressful situations. I think I have already spoken more, but before I close, let me say this to you. Let us kindle this triple light in our life. Let us develop our immune system. And the second light is the light of the mind. Let us keep our minds also sanitized. Every day we are so particular about sanitizing our homes, sanitizing our clinics, but we need to sanitize our minds equally. Let us kindle the light of the mind. And thirdly, and the most importantly, let us kindle the light of the heart by doing our duty a little more and by connecting to the source of all strength, who for want of a better word, we call God. I leave you with beloved Dada's light and wisdom. Stay blessed, stay protected, and above all, stay connected. And today we have for you a wonderful meditation. It's a beautiful way of beginning this conference. The meditation is on re-engineering your attitudes. This wonderful meditation will take you on a journey that whenever a negative thought enters your mind, whenever you feel depleted, you just need to energize yourself. You just need to re-engineer your mind. And how do we do it? The simple meditation will give you a simple solution. Let us all join in this beautiful meditation and feel renewed, refreshed, and revitalized. Once again, I thank you for this wonderful opportunity of connecting with you, friends. Stay in touch. Keep connected. Thank you very much. Thank you, Didi. I have a request for you. We, we want you to stay back for the meditation and uh, of course. Few, and few minutes with the, myself. Of course, and of course yeah. definitely. It is my pleasure. And also interact with our president uh, of the interim of uh, International Council of Ophthalmology, the second CEO and secretary general of the Quality Ophthalmic Society. So we'll, I'll play the meditation and, and I don't want to do another talk because I think this is all I learned and I'll play the meditation now and then after that we'll have the session with Dr. Chan Hager, yourself and myself. Meditation on Re-Engineering Attitudes This meditation is meant to help you tap your most valuable asset, the power of your mind. More precious than silver and gold, greater than any power on earth, is the power of the mind. The mind can make or mar your life depending on whether you control the mind or let the mind control you. The choice is yours. A controlled mind is your best friend, your faithful advisor. It is ever ready to help you and guide you to overcome any situation. It is your invaluable asset. All you need to do is to use it in the right way. Now we shall start the meditation. Step number one. Let us relax. 
relax every muscle relax every limb relax every nerve of the body make it tension free relax your shoulders drop all the weight you are carrying with you all your burdens all your problems now let the mind be free free from the worries of the past free from fears of the future live in the present moment be conscious of the now and here now and here now and here now take in three deep breaths as you breathe deeply be relaxed begin breathe in slowly deeply now breathe out slowly completely breathe in slowly deeply breathe out slowly completely breathe in slowly deeply breathe out slowly completely we move on to the second step now let us unclutter our minds picture the state of your thoughts they are cluttered with wrong ideas negative emotions selfishness anxiety hatred prejudice envy jealousy resentment ill will picture the state of a cluttered attic a small room crowded with useless stuff occupying all the available space 
now begin to throw out all the useless stuff imagine there is a dumper truck waiting just outside the room ready to carry away all the useless unwanted stuff pick up the broken chairs unusable bags and boxes the stuff that has been lying around for years pick up each negative emotion and throw it out pick up worry and anxiety cast it out pick up envy and jealousy throw it out pick up insecurity and resentment throw it out pick up all that is useless and clutter your mind now the room is empty actually it is large and spacious light is coming in through the windows open the windows let the fresh air in you are now occupying a spacious well lit room of your own stretch out and feel the space feel the uncluttered spaces of your mind we move on to the third step the room of the mind is clean it is vacant fill it with things that matter to you fill it with beautiful things things you will need things that will be useful things that will be helpful say to yourself i am the architect of my own destiny I am the builder of my own life. I repeat, I am the architect of my own destiny. I am the builder of my own life. Now imagine that as you breathe in You are inhaling the peace of God. As you breathe in, you are absorbing God's energy. 
द वाइटैलिटी ऑफ द यूनिवर्स ब्रीद इन पॉजिटिव एनर्जी ऑप्टिमिज्म वाइटैलिटी ब्रीद आउट पीस कंटेंटमेंट सिक्योरिटी resolve to live and work with a relaxed mind resolve to live and work without stress and tension to work at a moderate a reasonable speed let nothing 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 disturb your inner peace I repeat the words all was well all is well and all will be well both now and a hundred years hence that is the end of the meditation om shanti 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 thank you didi and uh, i will have uh, the discussion now with uh, chandrasekhar doctor uh, introduce uh, of chandrasekhar so we have dr g chandrasekhar who has been associated with elvi prasad i institute from its inception in 1987 and is currently the vice chair the institution of a chair on his name g chandrasekhar chair of director of education in 2003 recognized his contribution as the director of education at elvi prasad i institute he holds the position of clinical professor at the university of rochester and has been a visiting professor at university of california san diego usa and of the gc as is famously called as served as the president of the glaucoma society of india 2005 6 and of the gc the member of the glaucoma research society with a membership limited to 100 and has also served on the board of the world glaucoma association where dr neeru gupta who is the president in dream is now the also the president elect of the uh, uh, global glaucoma society so with this uh, dr gc and uh, respects to didi did i called in in my uh, i lost my mind in the sense lost to peace so i suddenly became thoughtless i wanted to tell many things about you that i have met you almost three decades before and i have seen you with the dada ji and which i have been of the uh, uh, running a medical center and i think it's grown beautifully well and we have uh, various professors from the us and from the gc and After Dr. G C says, I will also share. Dr. Chandrasekhar, can I share my screen? Yes, you can. Good evening, everyone, uh, and good morning to those people coming from overseas and different times of the world. Thank you, Natarajan and ICU and AOS for giving me this privilege of sharing my thoughts this afternoon. My introduction to the mission and dada was through kki institute and reno the administrator the chief there and i want to acknowledge the good work that goes on there i want to retitle the talk as the lessons to be learned rather than lessons learned because this is a journey of probably more than one life if not one life the destiny is not reached we are on a path and what direction we take and how we tread the path i think is what is important 
I want to focus on two thoughts, humility and love, as they belong to the medical profession that, that we practice or our personal lives. An MIT professor wrote a book on humble inquiry and defined humility as giving someone else a higher status than ourselves. And he classified humility, hum, humility into three basic types. A basic humility, which we have for our parents, our teachers, and things like that, which is innate. And that is straightforward. An optional humility for the film stars or the sports stars that we idolize, or perhaps even our colleagues who are better than us, either at surgery or at research or in education. That's an optional humility that we respect somebody for the work that they do. And the third humility, which is important in medical profession, is the here and now humility. And the examples that the book takes is about the leader in the operation theater as to the job in the operation theater of a safe and effective surgery is possible only when all the team members work together. And for that to happen, the outcome depends upon the contribution by the technician in the sterilization room or the sister who assists or the anesthetist who helps as the team. Though all of them may have a basic humility towards the surgeon because of his accomplishments, he needs to have a humility to be able to get the best out of them so that the job at hand of a safe surgery is carried out well to empower them to actually point out if there are something going wrong during surgery or to do their best. So that's the here and now humility. What Dada has taught us is the fourth humility. The humility that comes out of recognizing that everything that God has created is actually represents him. Most of the photographs that you see of Dada, either with children or with adults or with anyone, is actually with a folded hand. So he throughout his life, I think, has put himself at a lower status than the people in front of him because he successfully saw the universal spirit, the God in them. And the love that he has for everything around him, including the complete nature, is actually born out of that humility that he actually practiced. So these two concepts of humility and love, how do they translate to our medical profession is the next thought that I want to share. We are in the medical profession in the business of healthcare. Unfortunately, if we introspect, the healthcare has become a business and the care component of the healthcare has probably reduced over a period of time. With humility and love, can we bring back compassion and care to the healthcare profession that we are in is one of the thoughts that we need to introspect on. We are all familiar with this profound statement of service to man is service to God. We as a profession are privileged that our livelihood depends upon service to somebody who is sick and who takes our help. And if that service is done with all sincerity, compassion and care, then we are actually during our professional life doing service to God is what we need to remember. Step Taking that thought a little further of humility and love, if the patient is seeing the God in the healing hands of the doctor, that is appropriate. But the doctor's ego somebody defined ego as edging God out, should not prevent the humility of seeing the God in the patients that we treat. If Dada could see God in everything and gave them with his humility a higher status than himself, can we continuously through the journey that we take actually see the God in our patients and have the humility of the opportunity that God has given us to serve him through the patients that we treat is the thought that I want to share with you. So I think the lesson to be learned from Dada's life or medical profession is the concept of care and compassion. Can we bring back care and compassion with the humility and love that Dada taught us and practiced and can we in that journey keep on doing better day after day in bringing care and compassion to the patients that we treat with the humility and love that Dada taught us. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, GC, and I will just share the screen. So, 
we are in the international council of ophthalmology which launches the world of ophthalmology leaders program and i think none other than bd has given the leading the light and so i wanted to, the whole idea came to me how to see the positive in the midst of uh, covid 19 so lesson from reverend dada ji and i think uh, with the talk the meditation covered the mental and the physical even the, the who says uh, 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 the definition of a good health is uh, mental physical spiritual and uh, also social health so i think uh, sadha aswani and sadhu aswani mission are doing that and I, that is what i have learned and i think i have learned a lot one is uh, whenever i met dada ji i think I'm, i know him uh, almost three decades now the time i came in maharashtra and i still fondly remember when i went to the kki hospital in 92 actually he was the chief guest who was to inaugurate the uh, the yag laser at that time and uh, dr ashok murani was the ophthalmologist at that time and i was just uh, three four years in mumbai and and uh, thanks to my mentor who gave the, uh, the all the training i have so he asked me it when i went there as a faculty for the meeting but you know what he did he took me and with his hands he caught my hands and said you are going to inaugurate not me and i think that's the humility which dr gc talked and i think i and whenever i have met him i think uh, i met him in hong kong i have met him in mumbai i met him in chennai and uh, and also in uh, i remember uh, my my the uh, mumbai in her house i met and several places and i think always there will be a lot of people sitting and uh, i still remember like uh, you saw the photograph i am not able to get the photograph where dada dada ji is there and you can sit down and he actually takes the hand and continuously keeps uh, 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 like uh, giving energy to you and blessing you for the healing and i think uh, he he is the uh, like a persona with the who uh, vibrate his vibration is full of positivity and he, he teaches gratitude and he, that uh, didi also mentioned about helping others and didi i have seen she will do anything and i think she is probably the most blessed soul living now and she said she is not a leader but she is the leader who leading the sadhu was on emission so whatever i learned i put it together i am sure didi can add it up where i thought we should have a healthy diet to uh, live and on november 25th i think sadhu was on emission spreads a no meat a no meat day and he also says physical fitness and then as a doctor i thought everybody should have a regular check and dada ji himself as a body he says when he has a problem he goes to the doctor and gets whatever the doctor want, wants to do as duty as a patient he said he will get it done and you can see i just taken two pictures with our prime minister and with dalai lama i listened to dalai lama two weeks back in another medical conference and he said as didi also mentioned we do the, the human, like a, a sanitizing the hands and sanitizing the room and sanitizing the play hospital everywhere and he, and dalai lama mentioned and dalai ji also in a different way you have to sanitize the mind also and i think he mentioned in the meditation video how your room is full of uh, things and keep has that the same things in the mind you empty it and i think that's what the meditation does so with this uh, I, i think uh, i just wanted didi to uh, share uh, her things and with the, if any of the people along with us who ever wants to ask dd something or comment and i i want uh, i think we are all of some more just here you should visit uh, the kki hospital is a state of the art i hospital i actually promised two years back that i will come uh, regularly but uh, as the president of all india i could not visit pune but uh, now post covid i will come and my service will be there all the time as as not raj and nothing to do with the and the girls and and we are here and we have i can see sydney gail all from us here and dr namrata i think uh, dr natrajan uh, uh, and dr gc sir as well as uh, bb and we had a wonderful meditation uh, which we went through uh, very relevant nowadays and sanitization of mind is important i think we are all going mad thinking about the covid and otherwise also there are so many tensions anxiety 
and everything and i think this is a great webinar that way personally for me also this is the first time i am attending any such uh, webinar and you know first time in my life i went through the meditation part so uh, i'm sure uh, it is going to be useful for everybody neeru i want to echo those sentiments first of all uh thank you didi for a beautiful lecture and of course the meditation was wonderful and i think you know just uh, listening to your words and listening to the meditation was a purification in itself the beginning at least and it's a reminder to all of us uh how important um you know the the mental well-being is and and just a reminder that there that there's a lot of pollution going on and that we need to clean up the air uh up there uh on a regular basis and frequently and and uh uh certainly um you know this is a a, a practice that that is uh, uh beautiful and and uh i'm certainly very inspired to learn more and to uh put it into regular practice i think it'll uh, help uh help all of us to be mindful thank you so much mike is my mentor in uh, you know i learned leadership program in 2005 6 in american academy of ophthalmology we have mike and gail from american academy where and that's how i started the leadership development program in all india ophthalmic society so thanks to both AIOS now the uh, uh, the AO and also the ICO for having this as a concept and i think the idea is each one can be a leader my uh, your turn unmute oh i think you the camera went off my or evil yeah thank you oh, yes yeah, it's coming here yes mike yes thanks nadi uh, we're very happy to be part of the program and i'll get my face back in the picture i think that uh many of the concepts that i was intending to talk about have already been uh, presented some of these uh, very beautiful ideas about the the subtle aspects of leadership uh, came out in the earlier talks uh we'll talk later about the uh, the strategies that we developed to try to get the next generation into position earlier and that's uh our intended position to be coming up yes thank you and the evil yes thank you very much nati uh, to me really i mean to be a leader to have aspirations in your in your career in your professional life it's a, a conscious and active decision which also requires not only dedication oops techniques will be certainly presented today and tomorrow and one of those which sometimes particularly in the western uh, environment is neglected is the technique or the approach how to keep your mind free of what Miru referred to as pollution of the over over let's say flow of information of any sort how to find yourself how to be true to yourself and how to build your mind a way which can sustain the pressures rather than give up which can really grow professionally intellectually and i'm really Uh, delighted that we have this opportunity today and tomorrow to get appropriate guidance share our observations among us and even more importantly to provide them to those who i would like to greet again those out there in the dark those who logged in and are eager of course to learn so thank you so thank you very much thank you for staying with us and need your blessing and Thank we you. have your final word from you didi it's really been a joy to be associated with this beautiful function 
and let us carry this one thing stay connected stay connected to the source of all joy all peace and all love thank you thank you thank, thank you, you so much thank you so we thank you didi now we are going ahead with the next program so i just share the screen So next we have a very interesting session. It's a very important even a person like me. I thought uh, I've led so many organizations and growing up. I just finished the head All India Ophthalmic Society. Now I'm heading Asia Pacific Ophthalmic Society. But I think lots to learn. And with that, so thanks to Dr. Ashyana for getting Mimi Donaldson, a speech coach. She has a master's degree with the Columbia University Teachers College. Human Resources Specialist at Walt Disney Company, Northrop Aircraft and Rockwell International, Superstar in Speaking Business, Keynoting with Celebrities for Audiences of Thousands. Mimi has created speeches for executives, celebrities, entrepreneurs, and sales staffs. And Mimi is an official speech co coach for TEDx Talks and TED Talks. To date, she has coached 14 speakers to the TEDx stage, an author of Pitch Perfect, Speak to grow your business in seven simple steps. Bless your stress. It means you're still alive. Necessary. The contact sport of life. Her email ID and the website is here. But still, in case anybody interested, you can take a screenshot. At the same time, you can write to me. I can connect her. And with this, I now off to you, uh, Mimi. And Mimi is a couple and a half hours away from us. But uh, early morning and... Uh, Los, uh, San Francisco. It's, it's early morning, all right. Well, I am thrilled to be here, and I'm thrilled that the program so far has covered the ground of being when you are given the privilege of speaking on a platform. The ground of being is it's not about you. It's about the people that you are speaking to. The ground of being is Truly, you are a teacher. And if you look at the word educate, you look at the Latin root, educare, which doesn't mean put in knowledge to people's heads. It means to draw out. Isn't that interesting? So a true teacher, like all of you, the ground of being in your heart knows that everybody has everything they need already. When they smile and nod at your talking, it means I get that, I hear that, I know that. So it's a wonderful ground of being to come from that you're not putting in knowledge, that you're drawing them out. When I coach anybody to speak, especially TED Talkers, it has to be their legacy speech. It has to be the points you cannot leave earth without saying. And the speakers this morning have been so wonderful. <laughs> I don't even feel like you need this. But there is a logic part of the listener. The listener and you, the speaker, connect on two levels. One, some people call the right brain. It's the immediate response, do I like her? Is she, make, is she easy to listen to? Is her personality something I like? And you, the only way you can break that connection, because people really want you to make it. I mean, you get up on a, a stage or a platform or in front of a classroom or in front of a group of staff people, and they want you to make it. They just don't want you to make them nervous. They remember eighth grade speech class, and they're really glad they're not up there. I was telling Ashiana that the number one fear of people is public speaking, is number five, which leads to that Jerry Seinfeld joke about at the funeral, you would rather be in the coffin than giving the eulogy. And for some people, it's really, really scary. But here's 
the truth. It's not about you. It's about them. It's about the people you're talking to. So the first thing you have to decide is the purpose. What is it you want your listener to do, think, or feel after you communicate? Write that down. If you, it, It's a real focus, not what do I want to say, but what do I want my listener to do, think, or feel after I communicate? That's your purpose. And all of your speech is going to be geared to that purpose. The second thing is, who is my audience? Who are they? What do they respond to? How much education do they already have in what I'm talking about? How familiar are they with it? How much credibility do I have to do? When the professor showed that slide, I wanted him to, wanted him to make sure that my master's degree was in there because you guys are a bunch of very educated people. Some audiences will respond to different parts of your resume. Some respond to the fact that I've coached TED Talkers. Great. So the connection to things, let's go on. The right brain is the, do I like her? Can I listen to her? The left brain is the logic part. The logic part of the brain is the part that listens and says, is she making sense? And how you know you're not making sense is the audience gets whiplash. They go, what? Wait, what'd she say? What? You don't want people doing that. You want to lead them down a logical path. So the two most important things are the energy in your commu communication and the content that is logical. Energy is the most important characteristic of any communication ever. The difference between a great speaker and a good speaker is energy. And you must engage. I know Zoom is tough because all you've got out of the five channels of energy, the eyes, the hands, the feet, the body, and the voice, when you're up on stage in person, you can use all five of those to release energy and have the audience be interested. On Zoom, you've got your voice and your eye contact. Notice I'm looking at the camera as much as possible. The great thing about Zoom is, the only thing I like about it, is that you can have your notes right under the camera and no one can see them except you. It's kind of cool. As you know, the TED Talkers are not allowed to have any notes at all, which scares them so much. That's the most scary part. All right, so the two channels of energy that you're using right now are the voice and the eyes. Eye contact is not overrated. It's very, very important. I know you've just got the camera. If we were in person, I would coach you how to look at one side of the screen and then the other side. But with the Zoom calls, which we're gonna be doing for quite a while, we're going to look right into the camera. Energy of the voice is five, five characteristics. The pace is the fast and slow. So don't be too fast, but don't be too slow. And how do you know this? Get feedback. Ask people, are, do I speak too fast or do I speak too slow or is it just right? The pace, the intonation is the second thing and that's the opposite of monotone. The intonation is the highs and the lows. So I used to teach at Northrop and they were all ex-military and they talked like this and that was cool for them, but not for the audience. <laughs> so I had to teach them how to do highs and lows. And, the, and tone is a different thing. Tone is the emotion. I can say, I told you before, which is very neutral tone, or I can say the same four words, I told you before. And there's a little bit of edge in there, isn't it? So I always say before you go speak in front of a group, clean yourself. Like It's like checking your collar or checking to see your hemline. You check yourself emotionally. Am I clean? Don't bring in any stuff from the morning with the kids or the spouse or the workers at your job. Projection is the softs and the louds, and I still haven't mastered this microphone thing, but make sure that the last person in the row, if you're in person, can hear it. 
Non-words are very distracting. And you'll know one of Mimi's rules is if it's distracting, it's wrong. So non-words are like like and you know. How many of us have counted the you knows in a speech? And you ju it's just so distracting. And anything distracting is wrong because another Mimi thought, make it easy for the audience to give you what you want. Make it easy for them to give you what you want them to feel, think, or do. Which brings us to the second part of the connection with your listener, content. How do you speak logically? Well, the only way I know how to do it, and I've been teaching this for years, is speak to the listener's train of thought. In other words, the listener is sitting up, you get on stage or you get on the Zoom, and picture them with their arms crossed. I know this group is very open and loving, but a lot of people that you need to talk to are not open and loving. And picture them with their arms crossed, looking at you sideways. And the question in their mind isn't, ooh, tell me something wonderful. Tell me your story. It's actually, why should I listen to you? What's in it for me? People want to know if you're worth listening to in the first 30 seconds. So what I always say is lead with the need. Lead with the need of the audience that you're going to address. So for instance, I'm a speech coach. So I lead with something like, does the thought of speaking in front of a group make you sweat and keep you up at night? Now, some of the audience is going to go, yeah. Others of them are going to go, no, I'm really I'm used to it. So my second sentence is, do you suspect you may be boring? My third sentence, do you wish you could make people laugh? Because most people really wish they could amuse, the talent to amuse, as Noel Coward said. So those three things have been a really good opener for me. People have come up afterwards and say, yeah, I really need your services because I've always wanted to make people laugh but lead with the need of the client. Now, tomorrow in your time, I'll be doing creating a positive clinic environment. And that anybody who comes will know about, will want to know how to do that. So I will address that need. But here today, I'm addressing the need of your audience. They want to know why should they listen to you. You open with that. You get their arms uncrossed. You look out, they're looking up and they go, okay, you got my need, you got my situation, what you got? What's your solution? Now notice you have to answer the need in the first part. I usually say, I'm Mimi Donaldson and I'm your speech coach. We will write your perfect marketing speech so that at the end people come up to you and say the magic five words, I think I need you. Every business owner, or practice owner wants that to happen after they talk to a group. They want half the group, the people who have the need, to come up and say, I think I need you. So step two is always the solution. Now the audience looks up, listener looks up, and they say, okay, you got my need, you got my solution, why are you the one? What makes you the one? Aren't there a bunch of eye surgeons out there? Aren't there a bunch of speech coaches out there? Then you do a little line or two about your most famous thing. So I always say together, we'll use my experience of 30 years in front of audiences of thousands to craft your perfect speech. Oh, okay. Can a lot of people say they've had 30 years of keynote speaking experience? No. Can a lot of people say they've coached TED Talkers to this stage? No. So you pull out your most famous thing, anything that'll make your eyes light up. I often tell clients, think about your last patient or client. What did you do? What were they like before? What were they like after? Whatever makes your eyes light up, that's what, that's what you should say. <laughs> when I was interviewed to speak for this group, I told Ashiana that I thanked you corneal uh, surgeons for my life. 
And she said, how? And I, I said, my surgeon at UCLA, Dr. Sophie Dang, did my laser resurfacing on the left eye because I have cor recurrent corneal erosion. And it's changed my life. My whole life is different. And she said, oh, we know Sophie Dang. It warmed my heart. So yeah, with this group, I think my most famous thing <laughs> is that Sophie Dang saved my life. She had two little interns there too watching her and she was narrating it. I thought it was fascinating. I was so into it. Anyway, I digress. So if you have more than five minutes to talk, not only do you, hear, do, you do, here's your need, here's my solution, and here's why I'm the one to help you, you also do steps four and five, which the audience is asking, okay, give me some proof. Give me some examples. Give me a taste of what you do. How do you do it? How do you operate? So that they know to make a decision to agree with what you're saying. So in my case, it's we work on Google Docs, we work with Zoom, we write your speech step by step. You have a, um, a procedure. So steps four and five, if you have time, you tell the procedure or you tell the research about the procedure. Step six, the audiences have gone maybe five minutes, maybe 20 minutes. They're leaned back, they go, okay, so enough with the facts. Now they want to know, why are you doing, why are you so passionate about this? A lot of people call it the why story. Simon Sinek wrote a great book, Start With Why. And ever since People Magazine came out in the 70s, people think they have the right to know the story behind the story. I, I'm still a bit in, you know, privacy issues. I don't tweet my life every day. Uh, so I am a baby boomer and I understand that, but you have to tell people the juice, where you get your juice. Why do you do what you do? What part of it just thrills you so much that you would do it for free? And I always say doing it for free is my second favorite way of coaching. My first, <laughs> my first favorite way is doing it for money. I know it's funny, but, the truth is, yes, coaching people, finding their voice, claiming their power with their words, that's my mission. I, would, I do it all day long. I do it with, for friends. I do it for clients. The why story, some of you have very touching ones. My father's father was an OBGYN, and he tied off a cesarean, and he dropped dead of massive heart disease. So my dad became a doctor, but what kind of doctor? A heart doctor, internal medicine. So that's like a straight line why story, right? My father died of a heart attack and I became a heart doctor. A lot of us don't have those straight line stories. But that's okay. That's okay. It's your particular why story. Now, it brings us to the last step of your speech, any speech, which has to be the call to action. Because after your why story, people are a little moved and they ask, well, how do I work with you? What's the first step to working with you? And that's um, a thing that I actually taught my dad how to do. Because my dad was a doctor and he said, I'm not a business person. I said, well, dad, you kind of have to, oh, no, I don't do business. I don't do selling. I'm a doctor. And so I said, so what do you think I do? And he said, what you do is a combination of mental health and showbiz. And I said, dad, that is so true. So the call to action can be as soft or as direct as you want it to be. It's your, it's how do you tell people how to proceed to work with you? In my case, I usually say, uh, some of you are, love what I said and you connected with it and because you have a handout or you've bought my book on it, you're going to follow it and you're going to do it yourself. You're DIY, do it yourself people. Wonderful. Another place you might be in is that you don't do it yourself. You hire people who are experts and in which case I would love 
to work with you on Google Docs in the phone or Zoom, do it anyway, especially now everything's remote. No one comes to my house anymore. And the third place you might be in is that, yeah, you've connected with some things I said. You found some value, but you still have some questions. In which case I offer a 30 minute free call. You have to call me uh, for 30 minutes and we discuss your particular need, especially if you have a TEDx talk coming up or you have to speak for your association meeting for 20 minutes or 10 minutes and you don't know how to do it. I mean, we've had such wonderful examples here. I, I dare say you, you know what you're doing. But if you ever need me, I'm available. And my email is on the, that sheet. And it's probably also other places. So the seven steps of speaking logically help people follow you and get them smiling and nodding. What you want the audience to be is smiling and nodding. Oh, yeah, I get that. I get that. I get that. And that's knowing how to speak logically with the seven steps and using all the energy you can muster in your eyes and your voice. The clothes are important only that it's not distracting. Remember, anything distracting is wrong. If I, you have to study how much shows in a Zoom call and then make sure it's something you're not gonna fiddle with. Make sure the earrings aren't big dangly ones that people are gonna get distracted by. And I don't have to talk to you guys about this, you know. But make sure that the, something that you're wearing is something you like wearing and that you won't be distracting people with it. So, pitch perfect, speak to grow your business and propel your career. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you, Mimi. I think it's I got a, you back on track, Notice. Well, thank you, and I think really great, and uh, we are happy to have you. And maybe, Eva, you have some, any question or comment? And then, because she's going to be with us, she's nice of her to do this pro bono for yeah, us. Yeah, questions she's, is good. Yes. I would like to ask, thank you very much, Mimi. How much time thank you typically spend on fixing a speech? You know, how much... Uh, how much it takes to really see some yeah. change in the in your client yes wonderful yes great that you asked that it depends i have two programs one is the keynote or ted talk program in other words ted talks are very demanding you have to really be quote worthy about every 90 seconds people have to be reaching for their pens going oh i have to write that down that's brilliant and profound so it takes a little longer um, the marketing speech about your product and service or practice, and you're going to hopefully grow your business by speaking about it, that takes a shorter time. So ballpark, it's six hours face-to-face, -face, and the hours are an hour or a week apart because the content has to marinate. This isn't an article. If it was an article, we could write it in a day. You write a chapter. I've written four books. I mean, come on. But it's not. Every sentence needs to be well-crafted and land. So six hours plus three to five hours of my consultant time without you because I have to research. A lot of people don't know the origin of the word that they're doing or the purse that they're making. or the. So I love doing the research. You've got to be the expert on your topic. So three to five hours, six hours face-to-face, and then however long it needs to polish it. That's the marketing program. The TED Talk or keynote, when you're gonna keynote for people for 20 minutes or longer, it takes about 12 hours face to face over a period of about three, four months. So people call me and they go, help, I have a TEDx talk in three months. I go, okay, great, we can do this. Yes, but all I have is a 45 minute university lecture. A lot of TED Talkers are university professors, so, I go, okay, we'll get it down because it's got to be 17 minutes tops. It's, this whole thing is doable and it's so much fun. There's the synergy. I don't write a word without you. As I say in my definition of educare, I draw you out 
take lots of notes, and then I put your sentences in the right order according to the seven steps. So I'll interview you. You'll start with step three, what makes you the one? And I'll say, oh, goody, that's good words. We're putting it in step three. Oh, I usually leave with that. Not this time. <laughs> and okay, then after you work with me, the interesting thing is when you write one speech according to the seven steps, it enables you to write a bunch of other things according to the seven steps. Some of my clients write their book as we're writing their speech because they get chapter headings ideas and they, they have a separate file. Other people decide they're gonna do webinars from different parts of the speech. Other people decide they're gonna do two minute videos on their website for, uh, from other parts of the speech. So it serves as a basis, really. All right, thank you so much. Congratulations, Amy. Oh, you're yes. welcome. I have one. Yes, I love what I do. I think 30 years of keynoting is quite enough. It shows for sure. <laughs> I, have a question, uh, I have a question for you, Amy. Uh, yes, Namrata. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to know that uh, are your TED Talks or your keynote addresses all on a written, uh, are they all written formally first and then people just mug it up or how, how do they go about it? I mean, what is the format like? Uh, that's, that's so great that you asked that. All right, so I myself, when I was keynoting, they were from my human resources courses. So when I was at Disney and Northrop and Rockwell teaching, I was teaching stress course for 12 hours, four, three, four hours every week until 12 hours, three sessions. So I turned it into a speech. I never wrote it out because I had turned a bunch of material and handouts and workbook pages to a speech. But some of my clients, especially TED Talkers, we write it out word for word because you can't take any chances with 13 to 17 minutes. With my speaking, I mostly go from bullet points. I'll write down step one, lead with the need. Step two, what's the solution? So I go from bullet points and then I have my little patter, my stories that go with that bullet point. And when you work with me, we get clear on your stories and sometimes I never make you write your story out. It's way better just coming from you, as long as it's 90 seconds. <laughs> If it's five minutes, I'll cut it down. But yeah, it's a combination. How much, so some people here are so experienced in speaking that we won't write out the whole speech. We'll do bullet points and they'll do practicing. And I'll, I'll help them with the transitions and the humor. Part of the contract is that between sessions, I look for suggested edits that you might want to do, and humor. Because I don't do anything without humor. It's just my brand. Thank you, Mimi. Nilu, you want to say something? Unmute. Oh, just uh, Mimi, just listening to you was just such a, such a pleasure. You know, I think part of it is, the, a, a big part, as you said, is the energy, no shortage of that. So. Um, I think, you know, you're a wonderful example, just listening to you of, of, of what we need to all be striving for to, to be able to lift ourselves up um, and uh, to be effective because at this time, you know, all we have is this sort of tablet or screen in front of us. So it really makes a big difference. So I'm sure the pearls are, you know, going to be you know, people were writing down. I didn't because I didn't want to make it look like I was writing down. But, you know, thank you so much, really. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, this is really true. And whether you're a leader, you're all leaders because you have to be doctors in your own practice. And you, you need the energy. People are looking to you for energy. You need to lead the way with energy. I just think that's one of the number one characteristics that leaders have to have. I have worked with speakers, but speakers are leaders. And you can't, it's a privilege to speak to people. 
and to, don't take it for granted with low energy. I mean, I was psyched, but it was very nerve wracking. Yesterday, last night, I tried to go to bed at 8.30 because I had to be up at 4.30 this morning. I don't usually get up at 4.30. I don't know what that's like. But you know what? Energy, that's all it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. We are happy that uh, we are all, so now we are, I'm going to happy to introduce my next uh, speaker and my best friend in the AO. And I think he's a man of energy. I thought every time everybody tells me, but I think uh, I just wanted to share with him. I mean, he's uh, amazing. Sidney Gichiru is an MD, he's a refractive surgeon from Dallas, Texas. He has a passion for leadership development. He graduated from American Academy of Ophthalmology Leadership Development Program in 2012. Following his graduation, he served as faculty for the Asia Pacific Academy of Ophthalmology LDP for five years. In 2015, he co-founded the African Ophthalmology Council LDP and currently serves as program director for the Anglo uh, Anglophone section. Since 2019, Dr. Gicheru has also served as CEO of the African Ophthalmology Council. And Dr. Gicheru has held numerous leadership positions. He has served in many roles on the Executive Council of the Texas Ophthalmological Association, including president and AO counselor. He also served as full term on OFTAPAC, the AO's uh, political action team. He currently serves as a regional advisor for the AO's state affairs secretary and as chair of the AO communication secretary's communication advisory committee. He has been the recipient of two AO secretariat awards. He has also served as a committee member on the federal Drug Administration, Dermatologic and Ophthalmic Drug Committee. And Dr. Gichiru received an electrical engineering degree from the Southern Methodist University. He attended the University of Texas Southwestern Medical School, followed by an internship at Beth Israel Hospital Harvard Medical School program. He completed his ophthalmology residency at UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas. And Dr. Rachel Gichiru runs a busy refractive surgery practice and it's midst of changing his uh, 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 office, he told me, and I'm glad that uh, he's with us. And I think uh, you can see him, a man of energy. And to you, Sydney. All right, thank you so much. Uh, here, let me share my screen. So we have a, a Hindi movie called Wake Up Sydney. Okay, very good. Well, um, thank you, everyone. Hopefully, you can hear me. Uh, my name is Dr. Sid Gisharu. I'm uh, actually speaking to you from Dallas. And uh, I want to thank my good friend, Dr. Nataranjan, uh, for inviting me to come speak. Uh, Nataranjan is a world traveler, and I've met him probably on every continent uh, uh, in the world. Um, so when he first asked me to give this talk, one question I asked myself is, uh, why am I giving this talk? Um, because I'm not excellent all the time. I'm not always excellent uh, at my work. Um, and for sure, I'm not Superman, okay? Uh, but what I am is, uh, like most of us, I'm in need of leadership development. Uh, as Dr. Nataranjan noted, I have completed the AAO's LDP program. Uh, I've helped run an LDP program and I've held uh, uh, leadership uh, positions. And leadership is something an ongoing thing, um, except for very few people like Mike Brennan, who will be speaking later, um, uh, all of us need to uh, continuously uh, improve our leadership. So to start, uh, I just wanted to use this quote uh, by Bruce uh, McLaren. I'm a, I'm a big car guy, and uh, McLaren was a, a, a Formula One racer uh, uh, in the past. And he used this quote to eulogize one of his... Um, test car uh, uh, race drivers who uh, perished uh, while testing one of their first cars. And one of the things I thought that was, yeah, was uh, really interesting is the fact that he talks about life being measured in achievement, not in years alone. In other words, more about quality than about quantity. Uh, and so uh, excellence at work is something that's very, very important. Now, if you think about it, um, we are, uh, as, as people, only able to accomplish so much. We can accomplish a lot more when we work with a dedicated team. And I really believe that leadership development will teach you how to lead uh, a team. So uh, early on as I was uh, developing this talk, I decided that probably it would be better to retitle it Excellence in Re Leading Teams. So what we're, what we're going to do is just go over 10 
uh, tips on how to be uh, a better leader. So the most important is providing a clear vision with goals. Uh, so in terms of the vision, where is it exactly that you want to go? And then you have to kind of develop the goals and the goals need to be stepwise goals detailing how you plan to reach your vision. And within this whole vision building, you'll have micro and uh, macro goals. Uh, a lot of us are, you know, uh, big picture thinkers. Uh, and sometimes you have to kind of get down to the details. You have to account for both failure and success. Anyone who has been successful knows that you have to deal with failure at times. So vision building is key to leadership. The next thing is communication. And as Mimi uh, talked about here just a few minutes ago, I mean, communication is key to being uh, a leader. So you need to be able to shout your message from the mountains. You need to be able to reach uh, uh, your vision. Uh, to reach your vision, you need to be able to communicate it to your team, uh, to stakeholders. Communication needs to be constant. And it allows you to get buy-in and also to keep your team motivated and engaged. You also have to select the right people for the job. Um, you'll reach your vision a lot quicker if you do, if you do so. Um, it is possible to have the perfect candidate who is not perfect for a particular job, so you have to be careful uh, about that. Uh, a true leader recruits well for their team and delegates to the right members of the team because all of us have uh, different traits and strengths and weaknesses, and you need to be able to um, uh, uh, account for those. So the next thing is you want to create a team-oriented atmosphere. Um, and in, when I teach leadership development, what I usually will do is I'll ask the, uh, the participants to actually get a copy of this book, The Psychology of Persuasion. Um, and it's, it's, it's actually a very, very easy read, uh, but it really tells you a lot about how to persuade people. And I think that's important uh, uh, being a leader because you really have to be able to motivate your team. Uh, you have to embrace the idea that each member of the team is important. And you have to remember that if one team member fails, often the whole team fails. So you wanna create an atmosphere where each member is valued. The next thing is you wanna encourage innovation, okay? Uh, imagine if you were given a project where you were forced to do the same thing, it's always been done, it's always been done despite cer uh, changing circumstances. So for example, since most of us are physicians, imagine if you were to run your practice today the same way you ran it last year. You're gonna end up with a lot of sick patients and doctors. Uh, so obviously you have to be willing to kind of change things. And so we don't want to be stagnant uh, and you wanna use innovation uh, to basically motivate your team. So a true leader fosters an atmosphere where thoughts, ideas, and innovation are not only invited, but required. Uh, the next thing is recognize and reward good behavior. Have you ever worked on a project where your contribution was not recognized? Uh, you know that that would be a true killer. Uh, it would really kill your, your enthusiasm. How about if someone else took or was given recognition for your work? That is a true way to kill uh, the spirit of a team. So a good leader will have their finger on the pulse of the project. He's gonna know, or he or she's gonna know who is contributing and what is it that they are contributing and they will recognize and reward hard work. So a true leader is a just leader. The next thing is you have to hold people accountable. Imagine a project that's performed by 10 people and 90% of them, 90% of the project is complete, but the remaining 10% cannot be completed because of the inaction of one person. Who is it that you hold accountable? Is it that one person? Is it the 10? In reality, it's actually 11 people because you also have to hold yourself uh, accountable as the leader. People are gonna work best when they are held accountable and others on the team are also held accountable. So a uh, true leader is committed to accountability from the team and is also accountable to their team. The next thing is make sure everyone is growing. When I went through uh, the leadership development program, it was a life-changing event for me. It really was. I really grew so much that one year. Um, and um, as a good leader, you always have to find ways to ensure that everyone in your team is growing. And in the LDP uh, uh, that we run, 
uh, and the Asia Pacific one also does the same thing and also the AAO one. We really uh, teach uh, this concept of inside colors and it's a program where you learn to look at different people's personality traits and you can use those traits to help manage your team better. So for example, if you have somebody who's very, very outgoing, you're going to maybe approach them a little differently than you do somebody who's very, very uh, analytical. So you also, as a good leader, have to be decisive. You have to be um, uh, able uh, to make hard decisions. Um, good decisions are seldom easy and are also seldom risk-free. So you want to avoid indecision paralysis where you're sitting there and overanalyzing things instead of making the decision. And one of the things that we teach in LDP is SWOT analysis, where you look at the strengths and the weaknesses, and you also look at external opportunities and threats, and you use that to actually help you make decisions. And so SWOT analysis helps with decision making, and it's a skill that good leaders will uh, embrace. The last point I was going to make is the customer is always right. You have to start with the why. Why are you working on this project? Find out who your customer is. Is it patients? Is it other ophthalmologists? Is it coworkers? And you have to make sure that everyone on the team recognizes and puts the customer first. Uh, your team will be more successful if, you're, if you constantly know who and what they serve. And a good leader creates value by starting with the why. So in conclusion, LDP is powerful. For me, again, it was a life-changing event. The trajectory of uh, every aspect of my life changed uh, in 2011 to 2012. It's all-encompassing. It will teach you to lead not only professionally, but also in your eye society, uh, at work, uh, family, all sorts of uh, arenas. Uh, LDP, though, we have to remember, is not a guarantee of success. Uh, it's what you make of it. Uh, I remember in the different classes that we've taught, not every student goes on to do tremendous things, uh, but there are some people who are really able to take advantage of it and really do amazing stuff. Uh, LDP requires that you take a call. I remember when I did my LDP program, Mike Brennan always used to say that, you know, you have to be ready to take the call. So after I finished, I sat by my phone trying to wait for this phone call. But really what that meant is that you have to seek uh, uh, opportunity to lead. And then the last thing is LDP is cool. It's uh, very rewarding, especially when you connect um, uh, with global LDP. There are ophthalmology LDPers all over the world. I can say that there's very few countries where I would be able to travel and actually not know an ophthalmology who's connected uh, to global LDP. Um, and then in conclusion, this is our last class of our LDP. We had a meeting in Cape Town uh, last year. We had hoped to have another meeting in Cape Town, South Africa uh, this year at, uh, at World Ophthalmology Congress, but uh, because of COVID, we were not able uh, to make it, uh, but hopefully we'll be able to do that at some point. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'll, I'll take questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. I think uh, wonderful. Everybody knows you're a, a great uh, leader. And, uh, and Manamrata, you want to ask uh, Sid any question where I know him? Uh, do you have any questions, Namrata? Or uh, Neeru, you want to say something? Yeah, that was a very powerful talk, uh, Sid. And I really enjoyed uh, every bit of it. And uh, I, I, this, this, uh, this webinar has been really excellent for my personal growth, if I may say so, Dr. Natarajan, thank you for organizing this. Yeah, thank you, Natarajan, for really organizing. This is, this is an awesome event. Thank you. Yeah, if I could just uh, chime in. Sid, we've known each other actually through our, our uh, program together in uh, 2012, Time Flies. So um, just uh, great points. And I think every one of us can, can be better. And as you said, even as a leader yourself, um, myself in, in this position, we're all trying to be better so that we can serve others better. And I think that um, it's just a really important lesson. And, and thank you so much. It was a fabulous talk and great to see you. E C great who again. Great to see you too. If I may say, Sid, thank you so much. We were together last time in Cape Town, as you can remember. And uh, what I really appreciated is that uh, 
the whole group of teachers, uh, lecturers managed to, you know, just to enthuse people. Not everyone comes recognizing that they have capacity for growth, for, for leadership. And it's very important that they are helped in the very beginning to discover those skills and to somehow, uh, you know, um, kind of become ambitious, become keen to explore and uh, try to be better. So congratulations on the program. We had good time last year. Unfortunately, we could not get together this year as you explained, but it will, we will continue. Thank you so much, Ivo. Thank you for the kind words. So, Ivo, uh, I'm the next speaker, Ivo. Yes, Ivo? sorry. Yeah. No, I'm the next speaker. So. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, uh, we will have now uh, Professor Natarajan. Uh, Professor Natarajan has a very impressive record of accomplishments, of course. Uh, we know. Uh, Natarajan is the uh, expert in vitro retinal uh, surgery, of course, uh, also as a third generation ophthalmologist uh, coming from Madurai uh, from, from India. Um, there are very high figures to, to present now uh, on the number of patients and uh, on number of successful surgeries and treatments accomplished. 60,000 exclusive vitro retinal surgeries, hundreds of complicated cases successfully uh, cured and uh, sorted. We also know that, um, sorry, it's uh, disappearing. <laughs> I thought that's enough for you, I thought, so I thought I should start my, start my talk, right? Yes. You? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I... I'm trying to introduce the slide, you know? Yes. So, uh, you would like to take it from here or can I continue? No, no, no it's fine. I think, uh, thank you. Thank you, Ivo. So, yeah. I, I'll just thank you very much. So, and uh, I'm happy the whole idea is to stimulate and inspire young ophthalmologists. That's the reason I organized this. I'll just share my talk. So you can see my screen. Yeah. So my talk is on seeing the positive in the midst of uh, COVID-19. So uh, I actually wanted to uh, uh, quote, uh, transform and lead the way. I am comparing life lessons from the infinite wisdom of Kung Fu Panda and my life. And I think we started with a spiritual talk and about uh, how to empty your mind, be cool, and then we had uh, uh, Sid talking about uh, excellence as a leader. So I thought, I, I just, because of the COVID, a lot of people are upset, and particularly young people, when they've just finished their course or uh, just were starting their career, and they're all upset. Fellowships are a problem, the junior. So I think during this COVID time, I actually gave a talk saying that how to be happy. So for that, you have to believe, and you must believe, like the Ugwe to Po in this Kung Fu Panda. And what can we do to make a difference? We have the power to choose how we are going to react to our predicament. There is an opportunity to reflect, learn, and grow to be a better version of ourselves. Let's explore some valuable lessons which our friends from the movie Queen Fu Panda have taught us while comparing the same with some lesson from my own life. So the movie is about the Po, the panda, the fun-loving, happy, adopted Sukhuta who owns a small noodle shop. Four dreams of achieving great feats in Kung Fu and being a part of the Furious Five, the best Kung Fu team in China. And as the movie progresses, Po is chosen to be the dragon warrior by the wise master Ugwe. A fat panda, the dragon warrior, every, no one believed him. And it's like, a, and, then, and thought uh, Master Ugwe was wrong. People discouraged him. And yet he undertook the arduous journey, which rewarded him with the title of the dragon warrior. And I want Every young person, whether maybe a doctor or engineer or whatever he may be, or, oh, or young old, but I am in, in, uh, interested in inspiring young people that anybody can be a, a dragon warrior in your own field, whether it's ophthalmology or any field you choose. I was just born in the Temple City, which is one of the ancient cities of 
India in Madurai, where uh, we, where we have the famous Meenakshi Amman Temple, and that's me with my parents. Well, my parents are no more with me. And I have my grandmother who lives with me. This is uh, with my parents and grandparents. And I, again, I want to say somehow, without realizing, I saw my father wearing tie to the hospital, and I, I started wearing tie from my younger days. So I, many people think that I'm born with a tie. And, my, and somebody asked me in one of the webinars, do you go to the shower with the tie? So that's what I do. And I think uh, the main thing which I want to convey to the young people is the success mantra. Our mantra is the success formula is a real warrior never quits. And if you see the movie, the, the Panda, Kung Fu Panda wants to find out what is that secret uh, recipe which is for success. But I mean, you'll see at the end of this presentation, and the, one of the Uguay lesson is yesterday is history and everybody keeps worrying about it. Tomorrow is mystery. Like nobody knows how the practice is going to be next month or what will happen to our society, what's going to happen to the as an American Academy president, whether that we're going to have a virtual meeting, which is now a virtual meeting and what's going to happen in, we, in all India. We have our annual conference in 2021. We are still struggling. The scientific chairman wants to do it uh, a regular meeting, but we don't know how it's going to be because our regular meeting is in February 2021, and that's tomorrow. So it's a mystery. And today, today is a gift, and uh, and that's why it's called the present. And the English meaning present in the, in the grammar is is equal to actually a gift. So I think the moment we have to learn to live the moment and plan and learn from the uh, past, that is from the history, and plan for the future. And people actually mix up. And during the uh, present, they worry about the past. And then by the time they, uh, it's a, there's a book called Power of Now. And when, actually every minute is the power of now. And instead of remembering now, they worry about future or worry about the past. And both, so doesn't get anything. So don't dwell on the past and don't think about, but I, I also don't think about the future. It does not mean that you should not plan. Thinking and worrying is what I meant. And then, look, this is what the Grandmaster Hugo says. Look at this tree. I cannot make it blossom when it suits me, nor make it bear fruit before it stands. No matter what you do, that seed of peach will grow to be the peach tree. And what do you do? What do you do have? Is this day, this moment, and seize it. And that's what all of us have. Live this moment. That means when I am talking and I expect everybody who's in this to listen to me, the idea, that's what is my entire idea of the whole program. Contemplate, meditate self-evaluate, you will emerge as a strong, stronger and a more powerful version of yourself. And we are talking about leader and we want to be a strong. And, then, and today is our Independence Day in India. And yesterday was in Pakistan. Every leader wanted to uh, actually give uh, a motivational talk. And that's what that does. So this is a slide I made about 10 years back as one of the LDP. So this is when I was in uh, uh, South America. So never think of the past and it brings tears. And don't think of the future, it brings fear. And this is what all the youngsters believe. And live the second in big chairs. So I always, like many times, uh, my teacher used to say, hey, come up showing your teeth, man, all the time. You can see the three of us showing the teeth. I think like, and I'm learning meditation I'm in the morning. And the, the meditation teacher tells me, come on, keep smiling while doing the meditation, while doing the, uh, the pranaya or the, whatever, the breathing exercise. So the lesson number two is there is no easy way to mastery. And this is what the tigress learned. It took tigress 20 years to develop fists of steel. And if you know, there's no shortcut, only practice. And that's what Malcolm Gladwell has mentioned, that when you, when you have to practice and become like a Beethoven or a Michelangelo, you have to spend 10,000 hours in your time. And that's what I've done in Twitter surgery. And now the same I'm doing in leadership. I think unless you spend time, and the same thing Mimi also mentioned about practice, practice how to become a perfectionist to, to give a talk and inspire young people. And that's my mentor who made me a veterinary surgeon. And I not only learned surgery, but I learned many things from him as a leader. He is the man who brought the American ophthalmology to India in, in the 1971. That means almost 50 years back. And he's still alive and, and he's the uh, chairman emeritus of Shankar Netralaya, which is one of the biggest eye hospitals and ranked number one in many uh, 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 this uh, the various uh, uh, analysis. And uh, the Adi Sankracharya is another spiritual leader we had uh, hundreds of years back, who said not by penance, not by visiting holy rivers, not by reading scriptures, not by chanting mantras, but only by performing selfless service to humanity, one can cross the ocean of life. 
and i think you learned that from the beginning of the talk from didi that we and also from dalaji and you saw we have to perform selfless service to humanity no harm and there is nowhere it is written that by doing a professional service you cannot charge and maybe you mentioned about training and then giving talk and also for money and i think all of us have to do professional job to get a professional fee and that's what i tell the patient but you can still do the same with the selfless motive and and then people like us few of us can do service and we have doctors like dr namrata who's working in the government and every patient is treated free so the mark of a true hero or a leader is humility and that's what uh, we learned in the first talk and master shifu mentions that if you only do what you can do you will never be more than what you are right, right now and this is master shifu's lesson and when you listen to sid he mentioned the same what you were doing last year in the practice if you do the same it's not going to work and if you want a different result stop doing what you are doing right now dare to be different and dare to go out of the box you do not have to follow the crowd if you do most people do you'll get what most people get hence think outside the box and be different and i think be different but not indifferent and i think i love spreading happiness and in hindi we say kushiyan batne ka and that's what i do i think i spread happiness wherever you go and this is what in the end of the movie you see your mind is like water my friend and when it is agitated it becomes difficult to see you can see this here this is the secret in that movie but if you allow it to settle it reaches the top of the ceiling which is about uh, almost 100 feet above and then when he goes there there's no secret recipe and he says look down in the water and when it, when the water stands still you can see the reflection that means you can see your own mind and that's what dada ji mentioned cleaning your mind and many of the and your mind is like water and on self reflection you have the power to respond proactively and find solutions in any situation so i think as i learned from dalai lama you clean your mind and i think you have to do that daily and same thing like physical exercise you do mental exercise and same thing as a leadership you have no limitations in life the only limitation is have you have the ones you place on yourself that means you decide that you cannot do it and if you are a leader and you say you can do it you will do it and these times of uncertainty uncertainty particularly during the covid one needs to focus on growing from challenges and turning stumbling blocks into a stepping stone the lesson number 5 is to make something special you just have to believe it and that's how i started the talk and it's special and i think the whole program i think uh, mike asked me in the trial session how many hours did you i didn't calculate but i wanted to confess here about few hours, i usually don't give up or get upset but i think few hours back i was a little upset with something when it was not going wrong but i learned that by meditating that you have to be cool and you expect things to work out well and instead of finding fault with your colleagues or juniors or the it team or the company which supported or the society i think i took the responsibility and i said whatever is going wrong is me and whatever is going well is because of ico and aos and ao so i i think you need to believe that you are special and there is no secret ingredient and that's what mr ping says having come from a discipline and traditional practice that the, 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 this word is chalta hai that means you just say no it's all right don't uh, worry so this is where i started at the jyot in 1990 you can see my mentor it was an ordinary building everybody told me you cannot do it so i like a child i decided that i can start convert the building into a hospital that's what i did and then so you must uh, let go of the illusion of control and in in, in december uh, uh, 2019 if somebody has told you that 2020 what it looked like will you would have believed it i think in india a lot of people believe astrology and said all sorts of things nobody knew that corona will come and lesson number 7 get ready to dance with the danger and in order to become the successful person you want to you must learn to level up yourself through the hardship that are there to test you so i think every day you will have hardship learn to dance with your problem and not run away from them and learn from your mistakes and failures and never give up and that's what i learned and that's what i learned in leadership never give up and i think you can fall down and that's what dr abdul kalam says he likes the waves in the ocean because it's not that just because it rises after every fall it rises up so i this is a photograph taken in 25 2005 uh, 15 years back was there in the newspaper i couldn't identify myself that that's me dancing in a disco so there's a chapter in a spiritual book uh, called uh, the uh, uh, and then the chapter called dance of nataraja and for the westerners who doesn't know the my name is natarajan and nataraja means 
the lord of dances the lord shiva so how well how do we dance like that your dance for happiness you will not get happiness dance out of happiness then said so you don't dance for happiness you dance out of happiness and the number 8 your real strength comes from being the best you can be who are you and what are you good at and what makes you a you and your strength comes from you doing your best and lesson number 9 you are the master of your destiny no one and nothing can come in between you and your destiny take destiny by the horns and have fun the same thing has been told in chicago by swami vivekananda and that's where in the art center in chicago we have the swami vivekananda which is preserved thanks to the chicago county for that and also there the vivekananda road there in the in the end of the magnificent mile and he says the same that you are the creator of your destiny so don't blame anybody don't blame like good luck and bad luck everything is created by you so this is swami vivekananda he is a constant inspiration for me is yes, stand up be bold be strong take the whole responsibility on your shoulders and know that you are the creator of your own destiny and that's what is the entire program i have taken that four hours and four hours when i thought about eight hour program i never had and it didn't uh, think how many people will stay and how many will not i know it is recorded it will be there in the youtube and facebook but still i think everybody can learn something no one can decide how you live your life so the stop making excuse for the bad things that happen to you and own own up to the fact that you are the only thing that is holding yourself back allow yourself to grow those wings and soar up high in the sky where you are meant to be start having fun and enjoying every minute of your day knowing that it is ta- taking you one step closer to your destiny paul coel so mentions that when you want something the entire universe conspires in helping you to achieve it and this is there and the lesson number 10 embrace your awesomeness and the power of positive thinking affects your action po the panda demonstrated that by letting go of his self limiting belief he was able to become the dragon the warrior many times maybe your teacher says you are not good you are idiot you are something but i think just leave it just it off same lesson the teacher may be right that particular moment you may be an idiot and i think you have the power to determine your mindset regardless of outside influences you can't change life's events however you can control how you react to them and that's what i've learned don't react actually you have to learn to respond that means there is a stimulus something affects you you think don't react immediately think for some time take time maybe seconds hours days weeks months but take a then respond and when you focus on the positive the whole world opens to you and have a good intention it's a game changer and then power of thought this word i believe which is there in thousands of years in in india which has been written by ronda byan that is what you become what you think you become and world is managed by station of the inner self the lesson number 11 that's the final lesson from this movie and probably from my life to your story may not have such a happy beginning but that does not make you who you are it is the rest of you who you choose to be nobody knows what i was in 20 years back 30 years back but everybody is looking at something like i am looking at somebody looking at how he is now and i think everybody wants to look back and see how did you do that and everybody wants to know that secret recipe so i want to acknowledge my uh, 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 dr ashyan ashyan here and uh, dr aishwarya who helped me in preparing this dr dishita my executive lakshmi who's there who worked with me day and night and dr abhishek who helped me and that's the team i cannot forget without my team that's my hospital who helped me to run my practice when i'm like uh, now sitting at home and doing the program the hospital is running and i take this opportunity to thank the international council of ophthalmology the all india ophthalmic society american academy of ophthalmology and the entire ophthalmology fraternity and specifically god and sadhuvas one emission for giving me this opportunity for organizing and the talk and i am happy to i take some questions and then we can uh, move i can see cynthia paul mike gail all my mentors and we have uh, dr uh, evo to start the discussion thank you very much it was wonderful what i mostly appreciated your proactive approach to any situation in life sort of never give up so that's uh, definitely a very strong message now do we have any comments suggestions questions 
Well, I just uh, want to echo that. I think Professor Nye, you're definitely, this is your calling because you certainly lifted us all up. Your presentation was beautiful. And I think every single one of us could relate to all of those slides. I think, you know, there's a, maybe it, it's possible that many of the young young people that are watching believe that sort of things just happen and some people are lucky and some people are not. And I, I think that we all have our scars and we all have our, our you know, um, our tripping points through our journeys and we've learned through them. And I think the key is never give up, control your thoughts, um, learn, to re learn to respond. And it is training and sometimes the training is long and it's personal training. And I'm, I'm very appreciative to you, Professor Nadarajan, to really, um, you know, building this program for the community um, and under your leadership to really put a spotlight on on the the mind piece of leadership which is uh you know brings a whole uh, very holistic approach to other than, you know beyond the mechanics or the do's and the don'ts what to do what not to do but how to handle things and especially in this uncertain time so thank you um very much there's uh, and you know I'm looking at the screen here and I see, you know, Mike Brennan and Paul Chan and Cindy Bradford and, and Sid and, and uh, Gail, there you are. I mean, uh, we've known each other for many years and uh, shared stories and experiences and, you know, it's a journey. And so for all of the young people out there, listen to Professor Nataraj and he knows what he's talking about. Every slide of that, that was there, if you, it, you know, luckily this is being recorded, so you can go to the YouTube channels and it'll be up later. For the, and for those who missed it uh, or, or know friends who wanted to see it, you know, it'll it'll all be there and will resonate tomorrow and the next day. So thank you, Professor Nadrajan. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nadrajan. I think it was a great talk and I know him personally and professionally. And I know how true every single word on that slide is. And he actually lives It's not that he, you know, just professes And I think he's a great asset to all India Ophthalmology Society and also to the World Ophthalmology uh, Leadership Program. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Natra. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Monica. You're I've never heard you talking. I've never heard you talking so well like you talk today. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Any yes. more suggestions, comments? We have a busy program, of course, and those words which were shared by, by, by Professor Natarajan will kind of resonate for the rest of today and definitely tomorrow, and they will be with us. So uh, uh, why shouldn't we move on now and uh, go to the next speaker? Nati, I don't have the agenda on, on the screen. Can you help us? to see who is now uh, coming yes. next. Thank you. And Mike, you want to say something? Uh, I'll... Mike, you have to unmute. You are, you are muted. You are muted. I think Mike, you have to unmute. We can't hear you. You have to unmute. Uh, admin, can you please unmute uh, Mike? I'm trying. Yeah, perfect. Okay, done. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yeah, perfect. Yes. perfect. Yes. All right, good. I don't know why it's going out. All right. I I don't know. I would uh, I guess introduce my colleagues, if that's what you want, uh, Dr. Narajan. Yes. I'm just. Can you see the screen now? Yes. Okay. So I have you now. So no, I just want to know whether any whether you are my teacher in the American Academy of Ophthalmology or my mentor. So I'm happy that uh, you trained me 
and I'm happy to be a faculty along with you today. So we have uh, Dr. Michael Brennan with us, who's a retired comprehensive ophthalmologist. Dr. Brennan was the president of American Academy of Ophthalmology and now an international NY. And I learn a lot every day from him. And uh, a 1966 West Point graduate, Dr. Brennan later received a master's in aeronautics and astronautics from Stanford University. He served as an army aviator in Vietnam an instructor at West Point and was a finalist in the NASA space shuttle selection, uh, space shuttle selection process. He received his doctor of medicine degree from the University of Texas, San Antonio in 1978, completed his residency in ophthalmology at Brook Army Med Center and for Fort Sam Houston, Texas and served as a chief of surgery at uh, Fort Bragg, NC. He enjoyed single specialty group ophthalmology practice in Burlington, NC with his partners, staff, and patients from 1986 to 2016. And Dr. Brennan is a member of a member of a number of international ophthalmology societies and has conducted leadership development program for young physicians in many Latin American, European, and Asian, Asia-Pacific nations. Inter interspersed were national medical society reconstitution activities in the Middle East, sponsored by US defense and state departments and most recent activity has been annual leadership program for young ophthalmologists in Central Asian and West African nations. And we have uh, Dr. Dan, who's not able to join us, who's the graduate of uh, AO again, and a director of AO LDP 2003-8, to and faculty LDP 2003. And we have Cynthia, she's with us. Dr. Bradford is a professor of ophthalmology in the Department of Ophthalmology, University of Oklahoma College of Medicine, Dean McGee Eye Institute, and Dr. Bradford has been active in teaching throughout her career. She has authored modules and books to teach ophthalmology to medical students and primary care physicians. She has been the executive editor for the American Academy of Ophthalmology text, Basic Ophthalmology, which is used to teach students in most medical schools in the United States and has been translated in both Chinese and Russian languages. And Dr. Cynthia, you will be happy to know that even India we buy every year and many doctors use that. And for over 23 years, she was the coordinator for medical student and primary care resident education in ophthalmology at OU. She was a member of the AO Section 11 Basic and Clinical Science Committee, responsible for teaching text on cataract and lens. For over 25 years, she has taught the University of Oklahoma ophthalmology residents to perform cataract surgery. 2017, president of the American Academy of Ophthalmology, senior, and that's where it was great to be there, and I've attended the American Academy for the last 31 years continuously. Senior Secretary for Advocacy, American Academy of Ophthalmology, Secretary for State Affairs for the American Academy of Ophthalmology, Associate Secretary for State Affairs, AO, Faculty of AO, LDP, that's where she mentored me, Associate Examiner of the American Board of Ophthalmology, member of the ABO Crew Committee, Medicare Career Advisory Committee member, past board member of the Baptist General Convention of Oklahoma, past president, of the Oklahoma Academy of Ophthalmology, participated in the implantable miniature telescope for age-related macular degeneration. And we have a Dr. Paul Chan, he's an MD, MSc, MBA, is a professor and chair of the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences, and the John H. Panton, MD, professor of ophthalmology at the Illinois Eye and Ear Infirmary, University of Illinois at Chicago. Dr. Chan received his BA from the University of Pennsylvania, MD from the Temple University of uh, University School of Medicine, MSc from uh, Vale Cornell Medical College, and MBA from University of Chicago's Booth School of Business, and after ophthalmology residence at the New York Presbyterian Hospital of WCMC, he went on to a fellowship in veterinary surgery at the Mass, Mass Eye and Ear Infirmary at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Chan, nine years of faculty at the WCMC as director of the retinal service and veterinary fellowship before moving to UIC in 2015. Dr. Chan is a global leader in pediatric blindness prevention and ROP. His research focuses on utilizing new technology and imaging techniques to better evaluate and manage children with retinal disease. He has authored over 150 peer reviewed articles and receives grant funding from the NIH, the NSF, and a number of charitable foundations. He has served on the Global One Advisory Board and the Ethics Committee of the American Academy of Ophthalmology and is on the Executive Committee for the Pan American Association of Ophthalmology, PAAO. Dr. Chan also serves as the Secretary for Global Alliance for the AO and Chair for the ROP Committee of the International Pediatric Ophthalmology and Strabismus Council, IPOSC. So I'm uh, happy to have. And then finally, we have uh, Gail, who's my mentor, Director of Ophthalmic Society Relations, 
American Academy of Ophthalmology staffs at the AO Leadership uh, Development Program since inception <coughs> in 1990. Staff license on other development issues to 52 state territorial societies and 27 subspeciality specialized interest societies. Staff the Academy Council, 103 ophthalmologists, the policy advisory body to the Board of Trustees, Director Efforts of Yo Committee and its three subcommittees, Yo International, Yo Info Editorial Board, and Yo Advocacy. And you are the person we needed because we are having a Yo program tomorrow. And Director, uh, Director Efforts of Senior Ophthalmologists Committee, charged with addressing the interests of active and retired ophthalmologists, 60 years of age and, and older, leads implementation of the academy's media. And she is a great asset to an academy and to people like us. So. I am stop sharing the screen and mic to you and uh, all of you for the session and along with Evo and I already introduced you in the beginning, the CEO of the ICO along with all of us and Niru also here. Mike? I keep zooming out. I'm sorry. Jeez. Doesn't seem yeah. to want to hold. No, no, we can see you. Mike, we're yes. able to. No, we can hear you. Oh, you're muted again. Uh, you're muted again. Now you're muted. Now you were all right before. Uh, no, no, you're muted. Uh, uh, no, you're muted. Uh, no, you're muted again. Can uh, I think the, Cindy ought to? I think uh, no, you're, you on, you're on now. No, Mike, you're on now. We can hear Go you. I now. think yes, we can hear you. And I now I'm gone. No, you're there. You're there. Oh. It's intermittent, Cindy. Maybe. Go ahead. Um, uh, so, so um, I guess I'll go ahead and go on. Mike, are you there? Are you there now? I, if you keep on mute. You're still muted. Can someone control the mute uh, centrally? Yeah, does someone have a master control? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm Cindy, go ahead. Mike. Can, okay, can you're there Mike. now, Mike. Don't touch no, anything. Don't touch anything. There's a, I think that there's an issue with his mute button. It's flickering, so he's not, he's not able to yeah. keep it Are on you? for long enough. He, it, he gets it on, but then it turns off. Maybe, maybe, Cindy, would you... Yes. yes. Cindy. <laughs> so Mike's back now. Go ahead, Cindy. Okay. All right. All right. So, uh, Dr. Natrajan, thank you so much for inviting us. Uh, it, it's very exciting to be back with everybody because we've been so alone um, in our own little houses, uh, Zooming with people, but it's great to, to see you. So um, I live about three hours north of Dr. Gishru. And as he started, I was like, Kind of like we talked, but we didn't. <laughs> um, Sid is Sid is simply wonderful, and it's been so much fun watching him become who he is. Um, and so I'm just going to say a little bit, and that's that your leaders. We're not talking about how to be a leader, but your leaders. And the question always comes up: What do you do? How do you accomplish things? Because you're now, you're now in the leadership if, role. If I hit and um, and it, it, how do you accomplish things within your organization? How do you accomplish things between I organizations? Get unmuted for a minute, but it won't stay unmuted. <laughs> so I'm sorry. Mike, we can hear you. Now we can hear you. Um, so so you have to realize one person cannot do it all. I love Sid's picture of sitting on an island, um, and you know you can't change everything in an organization in a year and you can't change the world in a year although 
2020, I think we figured out a pandemic does kind of change our world. And as a leader, your mindset has to be service. It's not what, what others can do for you because you're in leadership. It's what can you do for your organizational and true leadership is being useful. And so within your group, you have to decide um, what needs to be accomplished, create a plan, get input from all involved parties. If you plan something without meeting with the involved parties, things are not going to happen well. But you have to do that before you start action. If you start action without including your coalition within your organization or with other organizations you may be impacting, then you're setting yourself up for frustration and failure because nobody likes being left out. Um, and, and it sounds so easy. You get everybody together, you, you get input, you make your decision, but you have to constantly be sure that your coalition, your people that you're with you, and you can't assume once you get buy off, Hey, this is the plan we're going to do that. They're going to be keep following you. You, you have to keep going back to your, your people that are involved, whether it's in your organization or other organizations you're, you're working with, and you have to talk to them and you have to be sure that they don't have new problems or new concerns. Um, and the final thing I wanna say is something else that Sid said, your communications are critical. The older I get, the more I realize you say something and you think, I said that really clearly, um, but the other ears that are listening don't hear that and they were hearing something else. So you need to be sure that your communications are clear and that you follow up and make sure everybody is on the same page. If you've ever been at Disney World with a family and said, you go here, you go there, we're going to meet back at this place at this time. And somebody shows up the next day, somebody shows up an hour later. Um, you have to be sure that everybody does have their marching orders. And then once you've set all this up, once again, repeating what's been said, but I think it's very important. You can say words, but you have to match with your actions um, and to be effective. Um, there's so many examples that come up from the LDP um, projects. One of them is the, the AAP, the uh, Advocacy Ambassador Program. Should have been easy. We're setting this up all with the Academy but we had some partnerships that we had to do. One of them was the academic departments, um, at least the residents to come to Washington, DC. The academy had to pay for their meals, um, no registration. We set up seminars for them and that cost money. Um, and then the state societies were going to help fund them. Well, there were a lot of problems because state societies enough before we implemented, Gail smiling. Uh, because it's coming out of their coffers and state societies don't have money. So you have to adjust, but you have to keep coming back. And every year we would see who had new problems um, in order to work out um, our program. And it's very successful now, but um, it's, it's what we all have to do anytime we want to accomplish one single thing. So Mike, is your. Trying. No, that's so weird. This is kind of what happened to me the other night. Uh, Samo, I think uh, you can, uh, yeah, your son can help, I think. Can you hear him now? Uh, yes. Yes. I think. yes, we can hear you. That's, that awesome. looks good. Don't touch anything. <laughs> Don't touch. Uh, so my grandson, all right. Uh, you hear me? Yeah. No. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes, we can hear you, Mike. No, I, I think it's going to the unmute. I don't know why it's going to the mute, Mike. I don't know why it's going to. He's he's muted, but maybe maybe 
Maybe while. How about Gail? Comments, Gail? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, 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 we can hear you now. Don't touch your mic computer at all. Go ahead, Gail. Go ahead, Gail. Go ahead, sure. Gail. I think it'll be great for everybody. Yeah. Sure. Um, first, I'd like to really thank Professor Natarajan, the ICO, and the All India Ophthalmological Society for this great opportunity to speak with this wonderful program. Um, as Dr. Natarajan mentioned, I am not an ophthalmologist, but I am on staff um, at the American Academy of Ophthalmology's headquarter offices in San Francisco. Um, I had the great pleasure to be the staff lead on the Academy's LDP since its inception. And it's really wonderful to hear comments like Sid made during his presentation when he said it was a life-changing experience for him. Um, the first class graduated in 1999 and we welcomed our 23rd class this past June. Um, I also staff uh, the Academy's Young Ophthalmologist Committee and its three subcommittees. And the Academy is really excited to see the growth in what we call the YO movement um, with great leaders such as Diva Kant Misra um, and others around the globe. I just wanted to give you um, a few stats about the Academy's LDP. Um, at the staff level, we're definitely tracking outcomes and progress of the Academy's graduates. Um, of the 383 graduates from 1999 to 2019, we've had 205 that have served as U.S. State Ophthalmological Society presidents, so around 54%. And this has really tremendously helped um, the academy train leaders at the state level, particularly during um, scope of practice battle. The LDP graduates come away with more confidence. They've built a, a network of colleagues that they can call on around the country and also certainly with the academy leaders that have mentored them. Uh, 52 graduates have served as either the president or chair of a subspecialty or specialized interest society. 12 have served as both a state and subspecialty society president or chair. Um, almost all the graduates have served at some level of committee or task force on the academy. And 25 have served at the highest level of the academy, either on the board of trustees or the committee of secretaries. Um, three academy LDP grads risen to the highest level and as president. Russ Van Gelder, Keith Carter, and our 2021 president is Tamara Fountain, who graduated in the first LDP class. Starting in 2002, we held a slot for the nomination of an international LDP participant. And some of our international LDP grads have certainly gone on to lead the national and supranational organizations um, such as Neera Gupta, who so, it's so nice to see her here on this program. Um, Stefan Saragard with the European Society of Ophthalmology. Of course, Sid, who we heard from earlier as leading the African Ophthalmology Council, LDP. And um, finally, Professor Natarajan, who has done just an outstanding job um, leading the India Society's LDP for many years. What, one of the principles in our selection process and this I would call certainly an essential management skill is the consideration of diversity and inclusion in leadership. Um, each year we, when we select the incoming class, the selection committee seriously focuses on gender diversity, uh, race diversity, practice diversity, and geographic diversity, leading to a really well-rounded class each year. I wanted to give you an example for gender. Um, the Academy's current membership is made up of 75% male and 25% female. And certainly we're expecting an increase in the number of female members um, growing over time, given the numbers of females in residency. The makeup of the Academy's LDP grads is 67% male and 33% female. So I believe we're doing a really very good job of mirroring, mirroring the Academy's future membership makeup. So I would say to you 
that if you're in a position to develop a committee or a task force, or you're responsible for developing a meeting agenda, um, to be really mindful of not doing what's easy. That is selecting your friends or those you know well, and really to cast your net wide, a diverse committee or task force, as that will only bring you wider perspectives and, and ideas. And this certainly applies to including the young ophthalmologists. We're trying to include their perspective in the academy. We've made a very concerted effort to include YOs and the YO voice on major committees and secretariats at the board level. And just in, as importantly is to include YOs on the podium at important academy meetings. So I wanted to mention three other essential management skills that I see as a staff person for physician leaders. Number one is, is delegation, and, and Sid certainly touched on this, to really consider the skills and the expertise that your entire team and committee brings to the table and really try to maximize on that. Um, the second is if if you're in a leader position that has a given term, let's say you're in a position for a year, really to think about reasonable goal setting. I see so many state ophthalmology society presidents come into their position, they have a year, and they have 15 things they want to get done and never really completely finish any of them because it's an, an unreasonable amount of goals to accomplish during their term. So really think about that. And I think the final one I really want to mention is a leader's role in succession planning. The best physician leaders that I've seen are those who help to identify and groom their successors, not when their term is practically over, but really early on. And this is where Mike Brennan is, does a fantastic job, Cindy Bradford as well. They are already grooming their successor early on, mentoring, mentoring, mentoring them along so that when they become um, the president or chair of a committee, they're ready to roll into the position seamlessly. Um, I think that's a really important skill that not everyone thinks about when they become a leader. They're only thinking about, I want to be successful, but part of your success as a leader is being successful in succession planning. Um, I would, lastly, I'd like to say I've worked with Mike Brennan for over 20 years. I, pretty, I know how he thinks. I can pretty much finish his sentences. And we have very open, honest, and direct communication. Um, I'm a staffer. He's the position leader. I feel comfortable disagreeing with him because there's mutual respect and trust. And I think I will stop there and see if Mike can unmute. Now can you hear me? You can hear me? Yes, don't touch uh, your mic. Thank you. <laughs> I'm holding the space bar as instructed. I was instructed to hold the space bar. Can you hear me? I was instructed to hold the space bar. So I want to thank everyone. I think I'll probably not say very much. Um, it, when you get to be 77, you don't have to wear a tie and you don't have to show up on time necessarily. And you probably don't even have to give your speech, it appears. So I didn't have a speech. I, I did want to say that we did this because the next generation was not able to have a seat at the table 20 years ago. There were too many old guys with gray hair who would not give way to the next generation or to the female population women in ophthalmology, and things have changed considerably. I'm delighted to see it changing around the world, and I thank uh, Dr. Natarajan for this opportunity to have a global uh, format at a tough time. Uh, I thank the International Council for their leadership in, uh, in international leadership development, uh, Central America, and, and, and in fact, Sub-Sahara wouldn't be going the way they are without the ICO's influence. 
and I would uh, hope that we can keep that going strong. Uh, alliances are critical. This is not about individuals, as, as all of us have said today. This is not about me. It's about us. And I, uh, I'll just stop and thank uh, Dr. Natarajan again. We could take questions if there are any from the audience. Paul hasn't had a chance to talk yet, so it's probably time for him to uh, let us know what's going on. That was perfect, Mike. I, uh, the space bar solved the problem. Um, can you hear me okay? Perfect, perfect. Yeah, so, so I'm not, again, I'm not, I'm not sure if I have much more to add after Cindy, Gail, and Sid, and Mike. Um, but uh, first off, uh, thanks very much to Professor Natarajan, the ICO, and also the All India Ophthalmological Society. So thanks, Nuru and, and Evo, for, for organizing this with Professor Natarajan. Um, so, you know, I, I think that just to reiterate everything that everybody said, um, you know, leadership is about service. I, and I'll sort of reflect back on my story. And I, I'm, I'm probably, uh, you know, as, as Mike said, um, you know, I I'm, I'm think I might be on the younger side. Uh, I've, I, I first met Gail when I was a young ophthalmologist and she's seen me maybe grow up. Um, I think, uh, you know, Mike, I remember when I first met you in Buenos Aires, Argentina, at the Pan American Ophthalmological Society meeting, um, Academy of Ophthalmology, and you sat me down and you just started talking to me and started asking me questions, right? You, you, didn't, you weren't telling me what, what to do. You were just asking me questions about my interests and, uh, and what I was doing. And you said, you know what, Paul, you should really get involved with the LDP. Um, and it, it, it just lit it, you know, it sparked and, you know, I, I was class of 2014, I believe, Gail. Um, and like Sid, it, it changed my life, right? So all the things that you mentioned uh, in terms of succession planning, in terms of uh, Sid mentioning showing up, um, delegating, all these lessons that I learned during that year and through my time uh, with the Academy have really been instrumental in my development as, as a person and also professionally as an ophthalmologist and, and in my, my, my sort of day job um, in an academic center. Uh, and you know, to Mike's point, I think that it's all about alliances, right? So in the academy, my role is, is the secretary for global alliances and it's all about collaboration, right? So I think that it's about us and not me. Um, you know, so there are a lot of things here that I think for the ICO, for All India Ophthalmological Society, for the Academy, um, for AOC, all these organizations that we work with, Pan American, um, it's a collaborative group of people working together for the same reason, right? For our profession and for our patients um, and for education. Uh, so it's, it's an incredibly powerful group. And I've met all of you during the course of my career, which is a lot of the fun part. It's too bad we can't be in person, um, but the virtual platform I think has really changed the way that we do things. You know, just reflecting back, um, and, and I think Dr. Natarajan wanted me to talk a little bit about um, communication. Uh, you know, and I think many people talked about this already, uh, and especially during this COVID-19 pandemic, and, you know, how do we lead when we can't actually be in person, when we can't travel, when we, you know, up to this, right? Nobody really knew how to manage this type of situation, and I think we all learned from each other, and we all mentored each other through this. Um, incredibly challenging time. So, you know, I think one of the first first rules of communication is is to listen, right? To listen very intently and clearly to what every stakeholder has to say, right? Synthesize that information, um, come up with a plan as a group, as a collective, and then listen again, right? To to the feedback, and then implement, right? But what, you know, one, one other lesson that I think we all learn is that you have to have multiple methods of communication, right? So sending an email may not be enough, right? Some people don't read their email. Um, having conversations and touch points constantly, I think, are, are critical. Um, and, you know, just reflecting back on the academy perspective, you know, learning how to pivot, you know, when you think that something isn't going right. Uh, you know, so... You know, we've, we've been having these discussions, you know, we send emails out, we send uh, e-blasts, 
but we're also constantly communicating with uh, the people that, that we're in touch with, right? Our membership, our physicians, our patients. Um, and just one of the things that you realize too is that everyone is right, right? So everyone who has an opinion and they may not disagree with you all the time, right? But what you have to do is sit back and listen and say, well, there's, there's probably a lot of truth to what they're saying. Let's figure out how to, how to work through that and, and see if, if there's something that we can resolve. So, um, you know, communication is absolutely critical, but I think the key to communication is one, this consistency, but also listening to, to all the stakeholders and processing that uh, so that you can create a, a proper action plan. But just, I'll finish up, you know, LDP is, is a phenomenal program. It's changed my life. Um, we've had incredible friends, you know, like Sid and Professor Nataranjan and, and mentor Mike, Gail and, and Cindy, uh, Niru, Evo, you know, wonderful, you know, I've met you for many years. Um, and thanks for the opportunity to be here. It's really great to have all of you. And I think I learned from Cindy and uh, uh, Mike and Gail is develop somebody to follow you. So I think I'm happy. You know, I'm grateful to AOS for calling me as a mentor, but we have the we have an academic and research committee. I hope she's joining Dr. Chitra now and the previously Dr. Partha. Then before that we had Dr. Ajit Babu. They do the program, and I'm just uh, I'm a speaker there. Dr. Chitra has joined already, so she's the one who's carrying the LDP in um, India. And thanks to the our uh, Dr. Namrata and uh, others, and I see. Uh, Dr. Ravi Goyal, who's a part of AO, but I've taken him in the AOS session in the coming session. And uh, maybe Sid or uh, Dr. Niru and Evo to talk about the intra, like the national societies and come together as a world leaders. Yes, so if I can share a couple of observations first of all, of course, thank you for this opportunity. I think what we have exchanged is uh, mostly based on our programs which we are uh, preparing for our uh, members of our member societies particularly those who are interested in professional growth who recognize their say appetite for for achieving more for uh, being able to lead teams for eventually being able to lead a national societies but, uh, so some other experiences. This is the privileged time when, of course, through ICO and our member societies, we are already uh, meeting leaders. But before joining ICO, I spent almost 20 years with WHO. I was uh, in, in charge of a program, global program, which was uh, dealing with eye care globally. And during that period, I met different type of, let's say, and different needs for leadership development. There were predominantly uh, ophthalmologists and specialists from ministries of health, and the leadership skills they needed were particularly around them empowering their teams to realize that they can compete with other health issues other health agendas and that ophthalmology and particularly eye health, eye care is very important for our communities. So there was a very different leadership empowering series of programs through national workshops, regional workshops, or even global workshops and gatherings. So, you know, there are various ways when leadership uh, skills can be used and various settings where they can be applied. But even before that, I was privileged to work with the university eye department back in my native country, which is Czech Republic. I was in Prague uh, with the university eye department there. And there was more an idea, which I brought back actually after my year of studying ophthalmology in the United States, how to make the starting of ophthalmologists, and it was brought up here repeatedly, owning their, their future, 
owning their professional life. And again, it was not leading teams, it was, it was not dealing with ministries of health, it, it was just dealing with their own individual future, realizing that they can uh, make a change. You know, particularly in the 90s, when Europe was changing, there was kind of cultural attitude, which was rather passive, kind of fatalistic. Someone will do it for me. I don't have enough thermoscope. There must be someone who will get it for me. And we went through many site visits, through many, many teaching programs, through the center, which was brand new, built with now more than 3,000 uh, graduates. And I must say, and I'm very proud, that those who started with us now in many countries run university or other eye departments, even have private clinics, but a very well established private clinics. And that was a critical time when many young ophthalmologists were actually helped to realize, no, 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 it's not that there is someone waiting for me to help me with my future. I can establish a program for diabetic retinopathy. I can introduce a program for ROP in my place of work. You know, so just in a summary, there are different settings, different environments, maybe just realizing what I can do in my own capacity. It can be what I can do with my team, or it can also be what I can do with my Minister of Health for the whole country. So we always paid attention to how to best introduce the skills and the resources so that would happen and the future for the patients and the whole community would be much brighter. So these are my faces in my life and different faces in let's say, engaging in leadership programs. Thank you. Thank you, Ivo. Niru? Uh, yes, uh, thank you, uh, Ivo. Those are uh, really um, pearls. And, and uh, I just want to add, uh, there are two, two things, thoughts that came out. I think it was um, uh, Paul said something about, you know, he was really happy that someone took an interest in him when Gail sat him down. And I think that's the first step. And then the second thing that he said in his talk was that um, we're, all, we're all leaders or you're all leaders. And I think the first thing is that, that this, this program is really, uh, it's a message uh, to uh, build on what, what Evo has, has just said, and that is that um, every one of us has the power and, their, and, and some sort of responsibility. And, and this forum and this platform is, um, is a way for you know, organizations like the ICO, uh, the All India Society, the AO, and all of the societies that are participating to say we're really interested in all of you who are watching as individuals, wherever you may be, whether it's, you know, you're a new graduate, you just out there starting practice, or whether you're part of a department, you've got a position and you're the head of a retina unit and you've got to make things happen, or whether you're in the OR and you need to figure out a way to work with the, the, the staff and the nursing team so that you can deliver the best care, or whether you're the president of, a, of an organization. So, we're really interested in each one of you building you up, understanding that you hold the power, sort of putting this program together uh, for you through the, you know, through Professor Natarajan and all of this energy and, and all of the people that are participating to let you know that it's, it's really in your hands. And so this is our method really of saying we're interested. It's like watering a plant. If you give a little water to a plant, you know, give it a little attention, amazing things will happen. It'll grow. And so we expect 
that the eye care community will grow. We expect that the eye care community will do better as a whole and as a group. And then and through that, we expect that we will have better eye care and we will have more people seeing as a result of that. And so that's, that's sort of my, uh, my take home uh, from, from this panel. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Niru and uh, you all. So we have uh, Sid from, he gave a beautiful talk. It's Sid, I, I don't know what to appreciate you. Yeah. I just wanted to add a couple of things. The work that I've been doing with leadership development in Africa has really been very, very uh, exciting. Um, and one of the things I was going to say is, I think as a leader, you, a lot of it's not so important to build from scratch. I think sometimes you can actually build on building blocks that have been put together by other people. And I think um, the, the situation in Africa is very, I mean, actually teaches us that. So again, um, Mike Brennan has been very instrumental with building leadership development throughout the world. Uh, and you can actually see his hand in Africa uh, back in the 1990s when he, he and Bruce Pivey and uh, doctors such as Kunle Hassan actually put together a group called the African Lead Leadership Group uh, that, you know, they, they kind of started a mini LDP. And you look at the pictures of some of the graduates uh, of that program, and they really are the preeminent uh, ophthalmologists in Africa today. Now, that program, uh, I guess, just went for a limited period of time. And then um, in 2012, when I graduated from the AO LDP, Mike and I actually sat down and talked, and I told him about my interest in uh, uh, global or international ophthalmology. And he told me, you know, said at some point, I'm going to give you a call. And I didn't hear anything from him for a while. And then I think it was about eight months later, he called me up. He's like, hey, Sid. Uh, you know, we're doing a, a LDP um, a, a session in, in uh, Asia Pacific. Would you like to come? And sure enough, six weeks later, I was in Thailand. And that's actually, actually I think, when I got to actually meet Natarajan. Um, and, you know, so for a while, me and uh, Mike and I and Gail and Linda Sai were traveling to, to Asia once or twice a year. And at the airport, Mike and I would sit down and talk and, uh, and, and we'd talk about Africa, how we really wanted to do uh, a lot there. And um, in 2014, we were in Tokyo, Japan, and we ran into Kunle Hassan, uh, Ibrahim Matende, uh, who were some of the leaders in Africa. And they were very excited about starting something called the African Ophthalmology Co uh, Council. Uh, but they were having a lot of trouble putting it all together and so Mike and I actually volunteered to actually run um, uh, a leadership uh, symposium for them. Uh, and we did that in 2015. And at that meeting, we actually sold the idea of an LDP for Africa and they bought it. And it was interesting. That meeting was in March of 2015. And I remember getting on the plane and being really excited about it. And then realizing to my horror that I actually had to put together a program in months. Uh, and we were able to do that. And again, the building blocks that Mike and uh, the other doctors had kind of put together were important because we were able to actually use some of those doctors as a faculty for our uh, current AOC LDP. But I think um, the, the, the short of what I'm trying to say is a lot of times as leaders, don't go, you don't necessarily have to rebuild everything from scratch. You can actually use building blocks of what other people have done in the past and use that to kind of uh, propel your, your organization forward. Yes, great points, Sid. And I think that's how I came to the AOC, to you, to the Ethiopia, and I think it's a great. And actually, I promised that I came to the AOC meeting in AO also and said as part of the WOC that I'll come and visit all the 52 countries in Africa. But now I think the COVID has tied me down. And I think after five months, no travel. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I was traveling every two days. And I think you are the one who are glad. Uh, I think you pointed out the, pro the, pro like you, you the points that uh, 
every leader has spread this our world over and i think more you give more you get and i think uh, mike's lesson is not for you and it's for the others so with this i think we have the more having time and we uh, we expect all of you who are can i know mike said he has to he has a family to uh, send them off to uh, where they can visit him so i think we others can stay back and sit particularly and we have dr ravi goel from ao but uh, i'm asking him to be a part of the aos and i'm glad neeru and ivo will be there so i'm just uh, showing the uh, sharing the screen and uh, so i'm happy the current uh, leadership program is uh, now conducted by dr chitra ramurthy she is the chair person of the academic research committee who is the medical director of the ii foundation dr chitra has been in private practice in ophthalmology in coimbatore so i was working with her husband dr ramurthy who was the past president of all india and we have worked with him together since the uh, 80s and since 90 after completing her pg her areas of strength are cataract refractive surgery and a glaucoma and she has been addressed with all the premium procedures evolving over the years in each of these segments she has been a pioneer in refractive surgery performing refractive procedures since 97 in large numbers inclusive of all the cutting edge technology she has the, had the special distinction of conducting a variety of instruction courses in both india and abroad partaking in acrs apo apsr on a regular basis she also has many papers to her credit and has contributed to chapters in textbooks on refractive surgery i am personally indebted to her because after she took over the covid is there but she didn't give up she has started the the leadership program virtually for all india optimic society and i hope she will continue and we have dr uh namrata and again starting with n and she is the person who is always stay connected and she works 24/7 and i think all india ophthalmic society is proud to have her as the honorary secretary and she is a professor of ophthalmology uh, for cornea cataract and refractive surgery the uh, india's premier center the rajendra prasad center for uh, ophthalmic sciences part of the all india institute of medical science she has got one of the highest number of peer reviewed publications about 440 and i salute her for her academic work and in addition she is also the secretary of the eye bank association of india and also the secretary of delhi ophthalmic society i don't know how she manages but amazing i mean today also she was managing two three webinars and thanks to her the entire webinar today is because of her we have dr partha who made a wonderful uh, the ldp uh, the chairman academic and research committee of uh, all india is uh, running the Uh, leadership development program and uh, so i'm happy partha did it and before that dr ajit babu did he is a super specialist and an opinion leader in cataract and refractive surgery he served as six years of uh, as a uh, uh, academic and research committee for all india ophthalmic society and i think he has traveled the most in india maybe i don't know whether he has traveled more or i have traveled more but i think he competes with me and i'm happy he picked up the Uh, leadership program and it's taken to a really a higher level he has introduced competition between the participants he has made a strict selection criteria i'm happy he's handed over the lantern and this is what i learned from mike and i'm happy uh, gail is there to watch and cindy also seeing and we have uh, the next uh, is the leader is the honorary treasurer uh, dr rajesh sinha the all india ophthalmic society professor of ophthalmology and cornea cataract and refractive surgery he is the treasurer of the and makes and really looks after the society and we have the incoming president varun uh, naik very my very old friend from mumbai at that time in bombay and he is the is one of the uh, he served as a secretary also of the society the uh, president elect of the all india ophthalmic society and he is i have invited him as a faculty because we conduct uh, every year one session in the v school of management in uh, bombay where he also comes as a faculty and gives a talk thanks to you varun and uh, he is a consultant ophthalmologist and head of the department of uh, ophthalmology md from aims fellowship in retina and vitreous and from perth in australia specialist in anterior segment surgery phaco glaucoma cornea and medical retina has authored several publication in indian and international journals and a book on glaucoma now he is a glaucoma expert so here we have a mini glaucoma including our uh, interim president uh, neeru is a glaucoma person and uh, dr uh, now uh, dr nak was the editor of the indian journal of ophthalmology for 6 years and then now almost 10 years he is the 
uh, editor for the journal of uh, ophthalmology in uh, from uh, maharashtra which is made a index journal and uh, we are uh, proud to have him here and we have uh, i have included ravi in the session uh, one because uh, uh, i didn't want to overcrowd the previous session and i idea is a comprehensive ophthalmologist and uh, is a cataract surgeon a reading eye associate and uh, instructor in wills eye hospital is a board of trustee of the american academy of ophthalmology vice chair ama ophthalmology section council and i entire the leadership program here is we have all the leaders here and i am i am a i am a fan of him. and i think uh, i somehow he finds me where whenever i go to ao and i'm there for it like i'm happy to say that i last third that 31st year i'll be virtually there so with this uh, i i wanted uh, dr namrata to start the session and uh, so i actually requested to have uh, namrata to start the session by telling uh, two examples of her her things as the, in the leadership and her experience as a leader in various societies in india namrata you have to unmute you have to unmute thank you dr natarajan for putting this webinar together and we've been having a great session since 6 pm listening to all the world leaders and we are thankful to the american academy of ophthalmology and international council of ophthalmology for putting it you know for coming and collaborating with all india ophthalmological society thanks to the leaders there so uh, it has been a great session as a leader i think leaders uh, leadership is something that you have to earn and it doesn't happen on its own and that is something uh, which you cannot demand but which you uh, have to command and it is it best comes when people uh, accept you as a leader out of respect and not out of fear uh, at some of the posts you may be there by the virtue of being there but then i think uh, respect is something that uh, should be there between the leaders and uh, between the people who are working otherwise uh, things don't materialize and we have uh, all india ophthalmological society uh, several of the leaders who are already sitting before you and uh, more experienced people i think uh, than me who would be able to tell their experiences uh, as a leader uh, as far as all india ophthalmological society is concerned it's a large society with diverse states with more than 23000 members uh, with uh, several of the state of the state uh, managing committee members so we have to take all of them together and there are again various wings uh, which work academic and research committee the editor proceedings wing the editor journal wing the uh, uh, the chairman the, the scientific committee wing so all of us work uh, in unison with each other and uh, i think that is why all india ophthalmological society is uh, where it is uh, we have to we acknowledge and uh, we recognize the contributions of our people who have been at the helm of the affairs uh, for last many years uh, at the all india ophthalmological society and it is courtesy them that we have a five floor building now uh, ai was headquarter building which is you know there we have our own headquarter and a uh, staff official staff and uh, we conduct meeting which is attended by almost uh, more than 8000 or 9000 members uh, annually and uh, it has been a pleasure uh, being associated uh, with the society and i'm sure with our uh, senior people guiding us through uh, as well as our uh, colleagues who are uh, members of the various wings uh, the road is uh, long and we have to go uh, we have to go ahead and we will uh, make it happen i think next to american academy of ophthalmology ours is the second largest society in terms of number of ophthalmologists and as far as the life membership goes ours is the uh, largest society of life members of the ophthalmologists so that is all i have to say dr natarajan no, and you, people... no, but I, i wanted to say we are following uh, what mike did for american academy of having the wio wio is women in ophthalmology i was really happy when professor sharan prabhakar invited me as a guest speaker in academy in 2012 and i didn't know her and she said i know the work you have done and your your name is there in the alumni in the aodp and i'm happy every time thanks to gail she puts one of the photograph of 
the ldp in the alumni photograph every year and everybody will ask who's this guy i'm happy i look young even though i graduated in 2005 6 and uh, the other is i, I think uh, i'm happy i forgot to acknowledge mike has come to all india filmic society the jail is not have come still and we had a dr ruth williams who the past president but she came as a trustee at large in the 20 2006 the varanasi conference and i'm happy with the ico and we had the ico president and many i mean earlier bruce pivi as the president and as well as to taylor and i think the ico he was is and one thing and both ico and ao there's no senior junior and i think over works well is great so i think that's why here i don't want to say i mean i know india we, we have this senior junior all the time i know we have dr varun mai who's the same age of mine or maybe little elder to me but i'm happy so thank you and thanks to mike because uh, we are we are the first leader in uh, lady leader now only chitra has joined uh, namrata otherwise till now uh, we had uh, we know we never had a i think a female secretary right namrata yeah so you are the first female secretary i have to uh, yeah i have to Next, thank uh, you know, Three organizations in India at a time, and a lot of people are jealous. I can say that. No, so no. I, I tell Namrata, Na, Swami Vivekananda says, if somebody is criticizing you and they are jealous, that means you are doing an excellent job. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Namrata. So Gail, you want to say something? And Gail and Mike, on a, we have a female leader in all India. I would say it's about time. It's really <laughs> wonderful. Um, well deserved. right so next uh, i request partha partha is the one who took uh, a, a ldp to a really a great height in india he has changed lot of things he has made practical outdoor uh, ldp which was not there when i was there and i i still go as a uh, as a participant and i want to be a participant and i am happy learn from mike as he said he looks he doesn't look 77 and because he's training young people he looks young same thing i think i'm learning so i think i'm now trying to lead from behind and i'm glad partha is a great leader now he is our future leader for india also but I, right now he is the chairman scientific committee but he will tell his experience as a uh, when he took up as a chairman arc and then took the leadership program i still remember his first day i don't know what is the ldp yes pa <laughs> sir thank you very much dr natrajan sir and uh, thank you everybody for uh, having this wonderful webinar where across the globe we are discussing about so many different issues and uh, we look forward to this important uh, 50 minutes that we need to exchange the ideas and where we need to tell you where we went wrong what did we do right and what were the experiments that uh, really happened in the leadership development program and first and foremost i need to thank dr natrajan sir who actually brought leadership program to india and incorporated it into the curriculum of the arc the academic research committee at aios so uh, it was a bud that gradually grew and 6 uh, years ago when i took over as chairman arc and i asked that very pertinent question what is this ldp sir so and he was very nice to explain that we need to have leaders and we need to have people who have to take up responsibilities it's not just important to be good ophthalmologists but good ophthalmologists also need to lead ophthalmology so that was a very important uh, thing that he told me and uh, we looked at the curriculum we had at the leadership development program and it was a very important curriculum in uh, a classroom curriculum with the v school in mumbai and which has been run which had been running for many years now and uh, when i first attended the first course it was so important for us just to sit back and think what are the common things the common sense importance of ophthalmology how to manage people how to live with people how to live with difficulties how to overcome these difficulties the economics of uh, ophthalmic practice and so many things that go in to forming a uh, proper training which unfortunately in our graduation and post graduation we have not been taught so this was a big eye opener to uh, to me and uh, we have continued the v school leadership program and dr chitra is as of now continuing it and uh, 
we uh, incorporated uh, a very important program and that was the outbound learning program and uh, i just heard about uh, pegasus as a very good unit where uh, they have an outbound learning and i had uh, a small experience for one hour with pegasus as an outbound learning that itself opened up Uh, my mind and uh, we asked pegasus to give us two days of outbound learning and uh, this was very important for all our participants and all our participants actually uh, enjoyed this program and learned from the very very small things and here we had uh, the benefit of dr natrajan also being in the program and it was uh, through a series of small um, tasks and events that the teachers of the program or our perceptors of the program taught us what are, what is the importance of a teamwork how does one play with the other in a team and how to bring uh, the whole project forward if it is in the form of a project so these are the small things that we have uh, learned on the way and uh, the enthusiasm of our leadership uh, program the participants who come from all over the country and uh, they are nominated actually by the state and each state at times has said we want to nominate more than two and uh, it's a it's an expensive program and borne by all india ophthalmological society and the participants uh, have get the free access to this program so we bear uh, the expenses but the benefit to our participants is huge and each of these participants have gone back and have really made a mark in their own state societies and are in the process of grooming new leaders and that's how the lamp has to go uh, one light lit and that can light so many other lights on the way and that's how leaders have to be groomed dr natrajan dr varun naik we have very senior leaders of ophthalmology uh, in india and uh, we are extremely grateful to them for having led the way not only led the way but also passed on the baton to the next gen and that's something that we also need to do in our time thank you very much thank you partha uh, that's wonderful and i think i'm happy you gave the lantern to chitra so chitra can you say how you feel after getting the uh, elected this year and that too in the march and then you had the uh, covid now as a new office bearer and i remember how you were you felt that the dreams were shattered and how do you feel today i uh, very special thanks to dr natrajan for um, remembering us and including us in this very uh, popular leadership program and um, leadership as he so beautifully said is a uh, is a trust is a trust which has been bestowed on us by the society of ophthalmic fraternity and the impact of it was something which was not as clear to me till i actually got to win the post probably the uh, the whole story started off by seeing how my uh, husband dr ramurthy did in his 10 years stint with aos and how how he flowered and how he enjoyed every second of it and i'm sure it had great strength to his personality and that it had an impact on his day to day uh, uh featuring in his work and far further on and uh, the strive to get into this aos is a huge challenge you know leadership does not come easy when you're looking at a 22000 to 24000 ophthalmologists each brilliant and exceeding in strength to the other and that was a three year or probably even a six year strive as you climb from one lower post to the other is that it's a matter of how you reach out to every single corner of the country reach out to as many individuals you can you can and ensure that you convey to them that you have noble thoughts that you want to be a leader and do something a little more than all these terrific leaders which i see in front of me have done so and of course uh, the leadership development program which is a part of arc activity was very beautifully started off initially by dr natrajan and then it went great steps under the stewardship of uh, dr partha and uh, i do believe that in my tenure i do understand that it's a team of very young dynamic people who believe that there is something something which is going to take them forward where they are already ahead in their lives but we would do something more for them 
so of course corona hit the the whole scenario soon after i came into this post but uh, webinars have been a great uh, stand for us and i do believe through it i would ensure that the best of leaders the, the greatest ideas more importantly lot of positivity and energy and drive would come and keep meeting this group of leaders who are part of our team and i we would take them forward and of course i'm sure every bad thing has an end and i'm sure as the year would unfold there would be many more opportunities or newer dimensions which i would like to add to this leadership development program so that each of these leaders in this leadership development program go back to their society and do their very best and probably remember me in the corner of the mind that i did help them to take those large strides further thank you dr nathan thank you chitra for a wonderful thing we have dr varun mack he is the seasoned lead, leader i call him and any class we now we have taken up the task of changing the constitution of all india academic society so it is like changing constitution of india because 23000 members and we have a regulation where we have to get 13000 members to give positive votes so that's a big problem for us so uh, i have taken the challenge and he, two days back he challenged me if you are ready to work 15 hours a day then i'll ask you to do the task otherwise you quit he told me otherwise he said you'll quit so uh, after you varun mute you have to unmute uh, sir, sir unmute sir yeah thank you dr natarajan and good evening to everyone and it's a really it's a wonderful experience uh, being over here and i'm really grateful to natarajan who who thought that i should be included in this program and i'm i'm really grateful to you natarajan now about uh, leadership there are certain things which i have my fixed ideas which probably and it complete on my own because what just now dr natarajan said that uh, i said because not even today means uh, two days back but if he remembers correct i think about 5 uh, years back or something like that or 6 years back in my house we were sitting and then he said no we can do it i because i see everything in entirety and practicality then i i i analyzed it and i said it's just not possible then he said no 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 i will do it then but he is in habit of including others also who are more capable and then and he will include him he said you and me will do but i know <laughs> you and me is only for right now after which we will go away only you do you will have me there so so that's why basically he includes only those people who are really very hard working so it, i said no nati i am out because i know it is just not possible even if i spend not only 24 25 hours out of 24 still i cannot do it it is just not possible so i said leave me out he said i bet i said yes good i am happy at least nati is going to lose one bet in his life so that way i was happy and uh, so anyway that is besides the point that was something different off the track but uh, the real leadership which i thought that probably i learned and got into this and understood this more deeply when i became editor of indian journal of ophthalmology then uh, it's not that in india because all those who are from outside india probably they will not realize the problems faced by the and the challenges faced by the editors of indian journal of ophthalmology uh, i mean sir so, uh, so in uh, indian journal of ophthalmology editors because we are basically all in one we have to arrange for finances ourselves we are not paid anything it's on the job plus we have to uh, i mean look after all aspects all aspects means Uh, including from um, replying to the various queries and mails and other things with a small office that uh, usually my own office whatever i had in my hospital with that staff only i just increase one staff and hospital was uh, kind enough to provide me that staff also so with that i just try to manage and somehow other i could manage it but finances is a big big issue big issue because that is very difficult to understand for others because other editor for any foreign journal they have to just look after only the editorial job nothing else and all system is in place here we have to make the system that system also you cannot transfer it to the next person so the previous uh, editor who was server was there means just i got some guideline but nothing was transferred so far as the system was concerned so i thought that i should make a system 
but in that direction i went moving ahead and also because see i also realized that there is a lack of information about the writing articles understanding and doing research so then that lacuny i thought first let me fill that lacuny with that idea i started research methodology workshop and i am so glad that it was taken up very very sportingly by everyone all over the country people now i didn't even re i mean remember all those who attended but sometimes now they come and tell me that they are all big professors in big institution this is sir i attended your program and uh, so really it gives me some kind of satisfaction and uh, so so those things which i took over and then that really transformed me to some extent definitely the understanding and uh, about the writing articles and uh, doing uh, research in india so that was one aspect but the other issue is other issue which probably i always uh, think means for leadership what it should be that if a person is sincere and selflessness if working with selflessness and you think of the society with this association for which you are working then probably you are a true leader and also you should have vision because mostly i also miss sometimes miss really sometimes i am taken as that i am really harsh on such certain words but what i see that everyone think oh he was doing 10 programs let me do 15 programs so i will say earlier 10 now 15 and i'll show graph something like that but according to me is it useful if it is useful to the audience to the majority definitely do it also identify the audience that which audience your this program is basically focused uh, on and basically then accordingly plan your program or chart your program to suit that particular audience so which sometimes i feel that leader should have but it is uh, means majority it is missing and you should have a vision vision not only as i said that only for conducting program out from 10 to 15 some new program if earlier only the four program now i am doing seven programs that is not the real leadership the leadership is something if you have a vision if you think for long term because now with the help of all those leaders who are sitting there now i am going to be the president of aios but everyone asked me sir aapka what is your what is your plan for your term so you must do you must do this you must do this my my answer simple answer is that i don't have big plans i have only i want to make the system right i i have a vision that if if i can put the system in place probably i have done a great job and at least the system which i can put in place which for next 15 years no one can destroy or distort probably i will be the maximum satisfied person uh, once i retire from that post so with this thought process i think nothing more and and no one should any leader if he thinks that i should be getting some personal gain the moment you think it then there is no difference between a politician and uh, our leadership so although we are supposed to be a educated society highly educated society but in that thinking process really there is no difference so so with this i i think i'll not give a big sermon i'll just stop here because i know some people will be getting uncomfortable miss not sitting over here but then someone who is listening also this program so that's why i'll stop here because more i speak more unpopular i'll become Thank no, you. No, no, no. You are very popular because I have the man made. You are most popular. You are most popular. Yeah. No, and, and, sorry, one correction which I said. Nati, you said Namrata is the first lady leader. No, Anita Panda was the first lady president of the yeah. IOS. So how did you forget no, no, that? No, no, no. Sudha Sutaria was the first president. I'm not against. Sudha Sutaria was there under yes, yes. Sudha Sutaria. Sudha Sutaria. So I'm very. I'm. I'm having a track record. No, no. I said first lady leader because of secretary. Ah, it's only secretary is leader. President is no leader. Wow, wow. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not telling like that. We didn't have the secretary at all. I think. So now uh, we'll have. A, I'm keeping Ravi as the trump card. So next is I want Rajesh. He's the I think the youngest in the group today. Thank you, uh, Doctor Natarajan. A very good evening to all of you. And uh, I was just wondering that uh, you know, as Doctor Partha was also telling, I also used to feel that why do we need to have an LDP program to make leaders? Because uh, most of the leaders they have 
something in them that they that drives them to become leaders and they lead uh, from the front and they 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 they, they basically like to uh, you know be the torch bearer and so what is there to learn but then uh, with time as i grew and as i you know took more and more responsibilities i felt that leaders leadership is not about leading but le- but uh, leading by example and take the team along and uh, for every leadership we should have goals and uh, as uh, dr nayak was telling that you know we all should have uh, proper goals and we should be honest about our work so i also feel that we should have goals and uh, but, but but then uh, we can't have a goal a very long term goal starting from now maybe we can divide targets in between so that we can achieve the goal so that and uh, i guess uh, there is a lot of thing a lot of things you learn in your towards leadership so i guess uh, uh, once somebody if attaining a post taking a post is not about leadership uh, actually uh, it's how what you learn and how you how you encourage your team and how you become a team man is what leadership Uh, about i mean that's what uh, i uh, i have learned so far that you know uh, that is something that you one should think about that how you can be a team man how you can encourage your team to succeed succeeding yourself is not the goal f- uh, for a leader but the success of the team is the goal for the leader that is what i, f- I have uh, you know gradually learned with time and maybe i mean uh, uh with time i may become even wiser uh, you know watching people like uh, dr natrajan dr varun naik and so many other leaders who have who have spent years uh, you know spending so much of time and uh, so much of uh, effort they have done in improving things uh, in every aspect of our society in improving things in every aspect of patient care and uh, so i mean i won't go into too much of details of all these but this is what i uh, have felt so far in life that there's a lot of things a lot of things are there to learn even now and uh, i guess maybe i can say that uh, you know willingness to learn is perhaps leadership or understanding that something is still missing and we have to improve further and go ahead with that is leadership Uh, i don't know but uh, yes uh, uh, with time i'm learning and uh, i guess with uh, in leaders like you who are you know torch bearers who are guiding force who encourage uh, young people to you know uh, do good things in life is something that uh, you know will be imbibed by most and that's how you are producing good leaders and that's how i can improve in my leadership skills Thank you Dr Natrajan once again for you know allowing me to speak in this wonderful forum wherein we have such wonderful leaders who have loads of experience and who have uh, you know worked as leaders for years and years and have encouraged so many people to become leaders thank you hmm. i think you don't have to thank but we want people like you the youngest in the our governing council of all to lead the business everybody having I mean, that's the problem of india we have a senior and junior i think i learned that's what i learned from america everybody is equal like whoever works well is great so i think that's what is northern america has taught me and i think i'm glad that i'm a part of that and i that's why i encourage and the whole program i've aimed at inspiring some young of somalia somewhere in the world so i'm happy if you are inspired so next we have the another young of somalia ravi who's a firebrand of somalia of american academy Thank you Dr. Natarajan. I want to, I want to, uh, I want to thank you for for organizing this wonderful program today. I was in the leadership development program number 6 for the academy and I thought I was the only person for whom the the, the LDP changed their life and, and it was it was nice to uh to sort of hear other other speakers today say, make the same statement. When I was in the LDP program, we had to do a project which was a year long project and we we had a, a um an individual goal. Um my goal at the time Uh, optometrists wanted to do lasers at the VA in in the United States and my my project was to create a pr- a, a presentation um to help educate politicians on on the dangers of doing that 
a few weeks after I started my project, I was asked to go to go to Washington D.C. to present my project to members of Congress. So that would that would became a unique opportunity, which Mike Brennan and Mike Brennan flew in from Afghanistan. I remember from Iraq to to to, to come watch my to come watch me make that presentation. The point is, is that when you get that call, when you get the tap, when when someone calls you to say, hey. We need you to step up. We need you to, to close your practice. We need you to advocate for patients. We need you to advocate for the profession that hopefully you'll step up. So to the, to the 5,000 attendees to this program, the young ophthalmologists, I would say concentrate on your studies, concentrate on your residency, concentrate on your fellowship. But at some point, three, five, 10 years from now, someone will tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, we need you to step up as a leader to advocate for your patients, for your practice, and for your profession. So another thing that I would like to um, leave you with, and I'll make a very, very, uh, just a short comment is that I'd encourage young ophthalmologists and those in practice to create atomic habits, create small, small, what, what James Clear calls atomic habits. Um, for the last 63 days, every day I've watched a Ted talk on leadership or on, on some, some new idea. So I was, I was particularly excited to, to hear Mimi Donaldson speak today because, because literally for the last few years, I've enjoyed TED Talks, but I said, you know what? Every day I want to learn a new pearl. Every day I watch a cataract surgery. Every day I want to learn a pearl to make myself better along the learning curve, not only as a surgeon, but also on the learning curve as a citizen and in life. Um, I, I love the fact that the, that, the, that, the, that the phrase servant leader was used by, our, by, by, this, by the first speaker to, uh, this morning on meditation, because I think that we are a group of like-minded individuals who've come together to move the profession forward and to hopefully to move ophthalmology forward. So um, servant leadership is a concept that not everyone's aware of, but I would, I would encourage folks to look, at, look, look into servant leadership because I think that is what ultimately makes us better leaders. And, and every act of leadership that we perform, I think helps ourselves spiritually and, um, and uh, to move forward. So with that, I'll conclude. No, I'm glad, uh, Ravi. I thought you will put the picture with Barack Obama, but you have put the picture on with me. <laughs> Thank you. So great. So I think Ravi is a great leader, and I think even this time on June third, when the American Academy uh, talk about George Floyd's uh, death, and then the uh, riots happened, and then rubber bullet. I think he took the leadership and and quoted the 2016 New York Times article where I had a, I the front page and I think uh, I didn't do anything for that. And I only did. So I, that's what I think I went to Kashmir and did, uh, I was not afraid of anything. And that's what I learned from Swami Vivekananda. When, when there was a, like the same thing, uh, Mike doing it in Iraq and Iran and everywhere. And he, I remember telling him, why not you train ophthalmologists from Afghanistan? And I still remember because we call them Patams in uh, India. I mean, they are tall and happy. Even the patients, they look like, like that. I have to look up and, so I was wondering how do we deal, but I'm happy. I mean, I learned that now I don't have fear for anything. I mean, I've operated patients from the IPKF in Sri Lanka, then in Blue Star operation in Amritsar in 1984. And then now in Kashmir and I see happening in Chile. So I think we have to, I think that's a, that's what I have told Nehru that we'll work on a thing on ICO, uh, on the, uh, our stand on ophthalmologists, what we have to do advocacy in, with everywhere the law is different in India also it's a big problem where they are all called the pellet and the rubber bullet as a non-lethal but I think it's blinding yes yes Ravi. Yeah. I mean I would I would just mention on that I mean we we really look to, to your experience in India and in Kashmir and also to our colleagues in Chile when when the protests were happening in the United States this was a fast moving article and this was a fast moving movement with the rubber bullets and the tear gas we were finding that citizens or being blinded every day. It doesn't matter, what, and Dr. Natarajan and I have spoken to reporters about this, it doesn't matter what, which side of the political aisle, aisle you are on anywhere in the world, our common mission is protecting sight. And I think that I would encourage uh, colleagues around the world to develop, not only to embrace the, the, the Academy's mission of protecting sight, but also to develop your own personal mission statement. These types of, these types of stories they are three-day stories or five-day stories. So as ophthalmologists, we need, we need to embrace these, these fast-moving stories, these fast-moving events, because we are the experts in the field. And politicians, citizens, everyone will look to us to give them guidance, and again, to protect sight and power lives. So I, I think that, so, so I, I look to you, and, and when I posted that on my personal blog, uh, I'm on the Academy's communications committee, the Academy picked it up, 
and it ended up it ended up snowballing in a positive way. Yes, and uh, so Mike and Sid, you have to say something on the leadership happening in India. Mike, you have a problem with the microphone, or say Cindy, yeah. <laughs> Cindy can help us, and maybe Sid. Okay, very good. Yeah, so Nataranjan had uh, invited me to attend uh, the uh, A the All India uh, Ophthalmology Society LDP. I haven't been able to do it, but as soon as COVID is is over, I promise you, I will make it uh, there to uh, uh, to participate. Yeah, Cindy, you're done mute. Uh, no, uh, you're done. You're done. You're on, you're on, yes, yes. All right, I'm sorry, now what? Uh, no, I, you are comments about leadership in India. So that would be fun. I think you've invited me before to go there. Um, never been to India, but uh, what you have done there has been fantastic. Um, and it's nice to see the leadership is changing throughout that program. And uh, you've made some huge impacts. Thanks. So that's what, as Ravi said, that was a project I took when Mike gave and gave that I should start an, a national leadership program. And I think I, I'm fortunate I'm the only, from a single country organization, I was the only one trained in AO. So I'm fortunate. Because after that, I think the applications were too many and now you have only supranational and no, no national taking part. And I am always grateful to the ICO and AO. And because of the, and I think the, our first speaker said, stay connected. And because of the connected with them. I think we have academic sessions in the AO. And I had a 200 years of a session in the last year in the academy. It was well attended in the room. Thanks to academy for all the support and 20, 2007, they did it. And I think uh, I wish all of you can, we can keep exchanging. And I hold one day I want Gail to come and uh, uh, inspire the young ophthalmologists here. And I'm happy Miru and uh, he was visited earlier, I think, not during the last time, but and uh, Peter Wittemann was a president and Nehru as a vice president has come. And then Bruce Pivey as a president and also uh, Hugh Taylor as a president of ICO has come and blessed uh, all India. So, and uh, this time Bruce Pivey inaugurated the Ophthalmology Museum in 2019 when I took over. I'm glad he was there when I took over. And uh, I, I, uh, uh, Nehru was there when I took over as the president. I'm happy I had about 100 countries representing and uh, when they took over as the president and I worked 365 days and I think I traveled uh, 91 cities, 15 countries and uh, gave some 100 talks. So uh, I think uh, maybe uh, yeah, I enjoyed it and I think uh, it was like every day getting out at 2 o'clock in the morning, catching a flight and uh, and almost couldn't uh, operate much but I did. I did that also and then uh, I think uh, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, I think I'm enjoying giving to others and uh, as uh, Mike said, it, it's not for compliment. I think we are beyond that. Like now we have Mike and I wish uh, Mike to be there for 100. Mike? <laughs> oh. That... Oh, again you have to uh, press. You hear me? Yes, yes. Admin, you can unmute, yeah. Admin. Yes, you can, we can hear you, Mike. Oh, no, again you have to press the you have to press, I think. The... Now you can hear me. Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Very well. Thank you. Uh, thanks very much. I'm going to quickly say before I lose my my voice bar here, I, I want to thank uh, Gail in particular for being with us. The The role of the executive is critical. I think that, that stands out. She's been a lifelong friend. And along with Cindy, we would like to say that Dan Bryceland uh, should be here with us. Most of you know him and how valuable he's been to the program historically and continually. No question. Uh, Sid, thanks. I was waiting for a, maybe a uh, scuba diver to crawl out and take you by the neck. That's a great looking picture you have. <laughs> uh, and I want to close, I guess, by saying that uh, Sid and Nehru would endorse the idea that there's more to be done in, um, in Africa. There's no question that uh, leadership development needs to be stimulated in Africa. Don't forget about Central Asia and the Middle East. Those are two other relatively underserved areas for our um, our service and, and our contribution. They need to lead, but we need to be there uh, by, their by, by their side. 
I'll, I'll thank everyone for uh, the opportunity to be with you. I'll apologize for my voice. Oh, and uh, thanks, Nataraj. No, thank you. Thank you, Mike, for a wonderful and thank all of you. I mean, it's like I'm uh, attending an alumni. I'm, I'm glad and I want, uh, as an ICO uh, board, of, uh, board of trustee member, I wanted to initiate this with, as a, uh, with all across the uh, borders. And I think that's what I wanted and I'm happy I could establish. And we have another four hour session tomorrow. And uh, anybody else like to say before uh, our president in dream of ICO will do the last part, but any, uh, yeah, I can see Sydney putting his hand yeah, up. Uh, Dr. Nataranjan, I just want to thank you so much for hosting this. Um, with the program in Africa, I mean, we had put it on hold after um, COVID hit, uh, but this has been very, very inspiring. It actually, it's inspired me to restart the uh, AOC, the African Ophthalmology Council, LDP. Uh, so I just really want to thank you for this really great program, really good content, great speakers. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. I have a suggestion. I, I can co-volunteer with you and do the AOC leadership uh, online. Then let's do that. We'll do it together. How about that? And then I have a suggestion to both ICO and AO. Why not we do a paid uh, leadership program so that the value goes up, whereas the uh, content writing, and I think we have Gail and uh, uh, Nehru to comment on that. But anyway, we can't decide. I know we have to do a lot of planning and a lot of things. I think I, I, I feel... AO and ICO to come together and make a paid uh, leadership program for who wants to aspire to do something for the, their country. And it's not just individual. I think it has to be their uh, commitment to serve the country, whichever country they want. And maybe the country society can sponsor them. So I, I too, I, I, I too want to say thank you to everyone here. It's a, it's a family. Thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Nadarajan, thank you to the global community that logged in, and I'm aware that we have people from all continents. Uh, we have from Asia, from Africa, from North America, from South America, Europe, and um, so we're very happy uh, with with this. Uh, happy to be doing this, the launch with the All India uh, uh, Society. Uh, Namrata, thank you so much for all your support. Chitra, it's so nice to be able to see you in this way. Um, and uh, Barun, you know, wishing you the best of luck in your, in your preparatory phase. <laughs> after listening to you for a short time. But we, uh, the ICO really looks forward to rolling out um, more uh, collaborative programs uh, that are um, in the spirit of stimulating leadership across the globe. Um, this program was very unique, I must say. Very glad to have the program start with sub such illuminating, inspiring talks and uh and it's a reminder that uh that we need to to take some time to get away from all the busyness of our heads and to take some calm and breaths and and to uh focus on what's important and i just want to thank all of you on behalf of the ico uh logging in but he uh sends you know he's uh very happy to have been a part of this program. And uh, so on behalf of the ICO, thank you to all of you, all of the wonderful speakers today um, and on all topics. So thank you very much. And it's not over. There's still another day tomorrow. So stay tuned. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You want to say something? I think uh, we can. Think it's, no. So it's it's a it's a great platform. It's a great uh, webinar to have this because I'm sure our all the uh, ophthalmologists, uh, member ophthalmologists would be listening to this along with the international counterparts, and this will also be available at a later date. So it's a good resource to have, and 
uh, for people who have not been able to see it now, I am sure uh, they will find time to see it. You are, you are connecting. I hope you can. You there he is. I see him. Yeah, you are able to. I, I can say that he's trying to connect. Uh, I hope he will join. But in the meantime, on behalf of ICO and AOS and AO, I thank each and everyone from my Gail, uh, Cindy, Sid, Paul, Ravi, our own India, Chitra, Varun, uh, Partha, and uh, Rajesh Sinha. And I think special thanks to EO and Nehru. And I think uh, I will fail in the last year to put the technology. We had a lot of glitches in the problem because I think uh, we have done in multiple uh, platforms. So we had some problems. I think his computer crashed. Uh, I'm glad my computer worked. That's why I started the day with prayer and it works. And I think uh, uh, that's why we are only talking spiritual and we want to. Is this Evo there? No. So, anyway, thank each and everyone. I uh, really from bottom of the heart. And I think uh, it's really great pleasure and i think i only want to conclude by saying i'm enjoying doing this because uh, it's not sacrifice i'm i'm learning something is what is learning is i think i'm gaining happiness and this is what you give more you get more happiness so i think uh, i'm happy with gail's statement and i think uh, i'm happy to all the time show my teeth and it's contrast and i think uh, it helps thank you thank you all thank you raman and thank you rahul and to ashana she's not here I hope she is listening in the thing who was uh, helping me day to day and my executive Lakshmi, I think uh, she really, I troubled her day and night. I think, uh, you know, it's, I think I've troubled many people, including uh, Mike and uh, Evo yes. and also Niru. Thank you all. And thanks for tolerating my question and all the time questioning. And I am happy to be a child to ask questions to all of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 you. Thank